and we are live. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. This meeting of Ajax Council is being held electronically and live streamed on the town's website. All members of council in attendance are participating by audio and video teleconference, and town staff are available throughout the meeting if council members have any questions on the agenda. For members of the public watching from home, please bear with us if we encounter any technical difficulties throughout the meeting. I now call this meeting to order. Start with the land acknowledgement. I'd like to begin this meeting by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is situated within the traditional and treaty territory of the Mississaugas. More specifically, the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation, signatories of the Gunshot Treaty of 1788 and the Williams Treaties of 1923. This land is and will continue to be home to the Indigenous peoples. Let us acknowledge the mistakes and traumas of the past through authenticity and support truth and reconciliation. Let us engage and celebrate Indigenous communities by being leaders of action and acknowledging the United Nations declarations on the rights of Indigenous peoples and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's recommendations towards truth and reconciliation. Let us keep these principles close as we continue towards truth and reconciliation and as we move forward with kindness and respect as a community. Does any member of council have any disclosure of pecuniary interest? <coughs> Hearing, seeing none, moving on to the minutes. So, wait just give me one second. I have moved by Councilor Crocker, Crawford, second by Councilor Tyler Morin, that the following minutes of previous council meetings be adopted. The special meeting on February 23rd, 2023, the closed meeting of February 23rd, 2023, the regular meeting of February 27th, 2023, and the special meeting of February 28th, 2023. Any questions or comments on the minutes? Hearing, seeing none, those in support of the receipt. Let me see your hands, I see all five, that is carried. Moving on, uh, Mr. Clerk, were there any questions submitted? By any members of the public during question period? No, there were not. Thank you. Moving on to our first delegation, we have the Women of Ontario Say No, seeking support for Bill 5. We have Jen Morton, member of the Women of Ontario Say No. Ms. Morton, are you here? Uh, the delegation here, Mr. Clerk? Good evening, Mayor. Um, I'm here. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Uh, my video seems to be disabled. I'm not sure if that's... Yeah, we, we can hear you yeah. and your okay. uh, presentation is on our screens in front of us. Please go ahead when you're ready and you'll have five minutes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, we can see you now too. Okay, excellent. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, yeah, yes, my name is Jen Morton and I'm here speaking tonight representing the Women of Ontario Say No. Um, to advocate for and uh, seek support for Bill 5, uh, named the Stopping Harassment and Violence by Local Leaders Act. And I'll just provide some background to uh, explain what sparked Bill 5 and this movement. Uh, in 2019, it was revealed through two Integrity Commissioner reports um, that an Ottawa City Councillor had harassed, including sexually harassed, uh, multiple female city staffers and job applicants. Uh, this abuse went on for years prior to being reported. Um, this councillor was eventually penalized uh, under the Municipal Act of 2001, which as council knows has a maximum penalty of a 90 day suspension of pay and or reprimand, uh, no matter how egregious the act. Um, so this means that this councillor was um, able to keep his job and still eligible to seek reelection, um, despite the harm he caused to multiple women, uh, one of which was quoted um, by the CBC as having suicidal thoughts um, because of the abuse she suffered. Now, this incident sparked Bill 5, which is a private member's bill. Um, and sorry, I'm not sure how to change the, the slides here, um, but it's uh, from the first slide. It's a private member's bill. It was introduced in March of 2021 by Liberal MPP Stephen Blaze of Orleans. Now, this is a crucial piece of legislation uh, that seeks to amend the Municipal Act of 2001, um, as well as the City of Toronto Act of 2006. Basically, to allow council the option to direct an integrity commissioner to make an application to vacate a member seat in cases of substantiated egregious acts of violence or harassment. Uh, as well, the second part of that would be to disallow the offending member from seeking reelection. 
Um, now, the anticipated second reading for this bill in legislature is scheduled, scheduled in late May of this year. Um, being a private member's bill, it does require support to pass. Um, and I'd just like to speak to another example that really illustrates the urgency for this um, legislation. Uh, in 2019, again, through a report from an integrity commissioner, um, it was uh, confirmed that a counselor uh, had committed uh, sexual assault on a female Brampton businesswoman um, during a work-related trip to Turkey. Uh, now, again, this behavior was investigated it was substantiated and he was penalized, but again, only for 90 days, the maximum allowable penalty. Uh, now in this circumstance, the council asked this counselor to uh, resign and he refused. Now in any other workplace in Ontario where um, there is legislated workplace harassment and violence policies, these people would be fired. Um, however, under the current process uh, with the Municipal Act, um, it actually protects these offenders. So um, our, our position here is to show how the current process really fails. It fails to deter, to deter others from committing um, other acts of violence or harassment. And sadly, there have been other examples as well. Uh, it fails to protect victims or encourage anybody to come forward because uh, in reality, who is going to come forward to report um, being a victim of abuse when in the end, the offender gets to keep their job uh, their position of authority, and that person may have to deal with on a daily basis. Uh, and really, the current process, it fails counsel, including uh, potentially this one, because it allows those who commit acts of violence or harassment uh, to poison your workplace and detract from the very important work you all do in your community. And I just ask you to think about um, if that was your mother, daughter, or your sister, you know, who is being uh, victimized simply while trying to do their job. And of course, abuse is not unique to just women. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we propose a solution to this problem, and that is the Women of Ontario Signal request you to vote in favor of supporting Bill 5. Uh, and I'm proud to report that uh, as of today, there's over 30 municipalities who have voted in support of passing Bill 5. Um, including Barrie, London and Richmond Hill, Vaughan and Hamilton. Um, I know that you're all leaders and you're here because you wanna make a positive difference in your communities. Um, so I'm asking council to join our fight for basic human rights, um, to pass a motion to vote in support of passing Bill 5 and to forward a letter of support to Premier Doug Ford, uh, MPP Steve Clark, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing uh, as well as MPP Stephen Blaze uh, and um, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. Um, and I'd just like to end by uh, sharing a quote that I think summarizes um, our message. And it's just that strong people stand up for themselves, but stronger people stand up for others. Um, we hope we can count on you for your support. Uh, I'd just like to thank you for your time and attention. And of course, if you have any questions, I'm uh, happy to answer them. Thank you, Ms. Morton. Did, have you had a chance to review the motion brought forward by Council Crawford and Henry on the agenda tonight? Um, not, not a final draft. Um, I, I, I did uh, view a draft a few weeks prior. I'm not sure if there's okay. any. I, I was going to ask if that suits the needs of what you're looking for. I, I think it does. But uh, I was just going to ask that question. I'm going to be bringing that forward to be dealt with immediately after this delegation, but we'll do questions first. Um, normally, I would say Councillor Crawford first because it's her motion, but we're not on the motion yet. So Councillor Lee, then Councillor Crawford in order. Thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you, Ms. Morton, for your presentation. Just a very quick question. The uh, website you have with all the municipalities supporting, um, that's a pretty up-to-date list of municipalities, I'm guessing? Um, I, I was advised by uh, our main organizer, Emily McIntosh, that it is being updated weekly. Um, I checked it today, and I, I think it is fairly up to date. Then um, it's, you know, just another chance for um, Ajax to take the lead. And, you know, thank you, Councillors, Regional Councillor Crawford and Councillor Henry for bringing this forward. I don't think I see any Durham uh, municipalities on the list. So again, uh, Ajax will be kind of leading this. And I hope that uh, other municipalities will be following. It's a shame we live in this world where this even has to be brought up. But you know, mm -hmm. we are not naive. This is the realities of the world. And absolutely anything we can do to support um, each other uh, as human beings um, is, is absolutely important. So um, thank you very much for your presentation and for stressing the importance of this. And I'm very much looking forward to support in a few minutes. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Regional Council Crawford, you're next. 
Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I just want to say, yeah, we're we have this motion here, and you're absolutely right. Um, I did used to work in the real world, <laughs> and in the real world, if something like this happened, you would be fired. Like there would be absolutely no, and it has. It has happened. I have experienced this in the in different situations. Thankfully, I have not. I have not. I have not had any of this happen to me as a counselor. Um, but uh, there needs to be a better recourse for actions like that, and people can't be getting away with that kind of uh, behavior. So we do have a motion on the floor here, and I'm very happy to be bringing this forward. My question to you is, I would also like to bring this forward to the region. So um, I'm a very similar, in fact, I'm not sure, Your Worship, would this be referred to the region, or would we do a separate motion to bring it forward at the region? I'm just looking at the motion that's not on the floor just yet, but it will be shortly once questions are done. And it says a copy of this motion may be circulated to the Honorable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, Therese Barnes, MPP for Ajax, and AMO. Um, yeah. When the motion's on the floor, you can certainly move an amendment to add Region of Durham as well, and they'll be circulated, and then we can ask them to support. Yeah, we did talk about it at AMO on Friday, just really briefly, because AMO generally doesn't, doesn't support uh, private bill member like private member bills that's that's what their policy but they did they did have a discussion around this so that might be something that we might be able to support um okay. later that's not closed door yet uh but certainly um we'll make that uh that amendment when it comes when it comes forward but thank you for bringing this to our attention we're happy to support this thank you um councillor henry questions for the delegation we're not on the motion yet well, I'd like to say thank you for coming uh, before us today, uh, Jen, much appreciated. And uh, to my fellow councillors, uh, with regards to questions, um, I wanted to know, this started in Newmarket, correct? Is this where this originally started? Or was it Ottawa? Um, so my understanding is that um, the Bill 5 itself actually started, um, it was brought forward introduced by MPP Blaze from Orleans as a result of the incidents in Ottawa. Um, now, the, the movement of the women of Ontario say no actually originated in Simcoe County um, as there was a, a, a separate incident that happened locally here. Um, the main organizer and uh, push behind our movement, Emily McIntosh, um, uh, felt that there there should be something that prevented, uh, I won't go into the details um, unless asked, but uh, this incident on in, in Barrie where um, a councillor was running for mayor uh, and, and had discovered that Bill 5 had actually already been introduced. So that the movement and push actually came after the, the bill was introduced. Um, and that, that support grew. Um, so it kind of evolved from the women of Simcoe say no to the women of Ontario say no. Well, you've, you've come to the right place because you have four women on this council and you have three men that's, that are very supportive. So you've come to the right place, my friend. This is, this is a leading council mm -hmm. that will take this and, and bringing it in front of uh, Regional Councillor Crawford, who's just uh, joined AMO, you've come to the right place. So thank you for your time tonight. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Do you have any further questions? I'll just wrap this up before um, thank Ms. Morton for bringing this forward. I'm very familiar with with Bill 5 and, and the cases that you quoted in Ottawa and, and the others and um, tend to agree. I, I think there's other areas where removal from office would be suitable as well, but happy to support this um, that you've brought forward. We do have a motion and I will bring it forward to be dealt with at this time. Uh, it is moved by Councillor Crawford, second by Councillor Henry, in support for Bill 5, Stopping Harassment and Abuse by Local Leaders Act. Councillor Crawford. Thank you, Worship. I think I've, I've said enough. I've, I've talked uh, previously, so I'm, I'm okay with this. Um, happy to be bringing this forward. And, and I would like to make, sorry, I should say, I would like to make an amendment to include uh, um, Regional Council. Uh, okay. on it's your motion, so I think that can be just a friendly amendment, Yeah, uh, Mr. Clerk, that will include Regional Council on the distribution. Good. Yep, thank you. That's it. Thank uh, you. If I may, Council Council, uh, Regional Council, and the Durham Region Municipalities separately as well. Yeah, yep, sure. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, Councillor Henry, did you want to speak as a seconder? 
Uh, no, I think Councillor Crawford has said everything for both of us. And like I said, Jen, you brought it to the right place. I'm in favor. Thank you. Um, Ms. Morton, just it's it's not on the screen. It's that Ajax Council expressed its support for Bill 5, Stop Harass, Stopping Harassment and Abuse by Local Leaders Act, and a copy of this motion be circulated to the Honorable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, MPPs, AMO, regional councillors, and other municipalities in Durham. Does that satisfy your request? Yes, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, anything further on this? If not, those in favor? I see all hands. That's carried unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Morton, for your delegation. Thank you, Council. Uh, before I go on to our next, I, I was negligent at the beginning to um, address the two missing councillors we have tonight. Councillor Bauer sends her regrets, as does Councillor Dyes. Councillor Dyes is dealing with a family emergency and unable to be here. We wish her uh, all the best, um, and our thoughts are with her. Moving on to our next delegation, we have pitch proposal for the game of cricket, Aditya Singh, General Secretary, Durham Champions Cricket Club, and Shashir Saxena, Facility Officer, Durham Champions Cricket Club. Are the delegates here? Uh, yes, uh, um, yep. Mr. Mayor, uh, good evening. Uh, uh, myself and Shashir is here. And uh, okay. good evening for you and good evening to the rest of the counselors. Thank you. Uh, please go ahead when you're ready and you'll have five minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, yes, sir, we are actually representing our club here, Durham Champions Cricket Club, uh, which is in uh, Southern Durham region. And uh, we would like to uh, we would like to request the town of Ajax to uh, for this pitch proposal to allow us to build a natural cricket pitch on an open field in the uh, in our uh, in our region in the town of Ajax. Um, I just wanted to like present you like you know our current situation right now. What do we have? Um, there's there's like about approximately just over 500 people in 10 different clubs and teams uh, in the Durham region who um, who are you know actively taking part in this uh, in this game when the some in the summer season, and we have about uh, uh, three grounds to play in overall Durham region. In Ajax, we have like a one ground, and the other one is coming up uh, pretty soon, so that's really good. Um, the current situation is basically like you know um, the players are playing in um, you know public spaces like public parks or like the baseball ground or even like in the parking lot. We we, we must have heard like you know a couple of news uh, back in last season that you know players were being washed uh, playing in that in the parking lots and everything, which is kind of like you know uh, not not really safe and it's like uh, you know injuries can happen playing there. Um, it's just because of like the unavailability of the um, of the cricket pitch or like you know even like a proper fields to play in here. Um, our objective is basically like you know um, cricket is actually one of the fastest growing game uh, or the sports uh, in across the region or even like you know nationally. Um, so we are looking to basically develop a strategy where uh, you know we can we can better meet the demand. Um, and it's not even like a, uh, asking for like a dedicated ground on this. We are basically like what we are requesting is um, just to have like more space to play uh, in terms of like, you know, if we have an open field, which uh, which we can have. Um, if uh, Sorry, Jason, if you would go to the next slide and I will I'll say. Um, so this is basically like, you know, in open public spaces or uh, sorry, not public spaces in open spot on open parks and fields. Um, it is basically building a natural cricket pitch uh, in the center. It does nothing. Uh, it doesn't impact like the like the ground itself or the field itself, nor it basically affect any ground conditions. So, for example, grading or anything. What it is, is uh, just to just to simply uh, explain you like, you know, there, uh, there's a process of like, you know, removing like a grass and then putting a new grass. It's something similar to that. Like, you know, we're removing the grass and making the flat pitch, making the ground hard. It won't impact any other uh, sport as well. It's basically like, you know, this can be used just as the normal portion of the ground. So for example, let's say if there is a soccer field and, uh, you know, people are playing soccer or like players are playing soccer, they can just run over that, no problem at all with that. Um, 
in the town of Ajax only, like all of the Durham region, we have like plenty of open fields or open parks which are not being used at a full potential right now. So uh, we we saw that, we observed that, and uh, even like the, the place where we play uh, in Ajax, um, that that field is was like pretty much available all the time on the on the weekends, for example, when we play, um, and we were playing there. So that's why it came us in the mind why why to go for like you know dedicated dedicated ground itself when we can we can when we can use these open spaces uh, to play. Uh, so that's why the idea came in and one I uh, we wanted to actually come in front of you guys and uh, you know request this proposal. I just want to show you like the, on the next slide, uh, basically how it will look like just for the visual representation. Uh, so, for example, this could be like a, any normal uh, field and it comes in the center. It is a natural pitch. It doesn't require any artificial turf. Um, we just basically remove the remove the grasses and then make it flat with the help of uh, a very thin gravel or like um, soil, like a garden soil. Um, and just make it flat and hard. Um, on the next slide, we can see um, an approximate measurements. So just to give an idea in, uh, in terms of feet, we are looking for about 65 feet in length and about eight feet wide, I think. So like I said, uh, it, does, it would not impact um, the grading or anything else and it can be used just like the normal rest of the portion of the crowd here. Um, this is our proposal and, you know, I would open myself to any questions. And also I wanted to add, you know, I forgot right in the starting, um, the first topic was great. If I could, you know, give my support to that bill as well, for sure. I just wanted to support that. But, uh, yeah, for sure. I will open myself for any questions or my uh, here as well. Thank you for your delegation. We have a couple of hands up. Councilor Tyler Moore. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, thank you, Mr. Singh, for coming to council today. Um, so right now, just for clarity, and, and, and I'm imagining some of these questions might seem rhetorical to you, but so the Durham Champions Cricket Club, where is your home court right now? So when you when you have a tournament or games, what, where do you play right now? Where, where would you congregate? Yes, sir. So right now, um, you know, when we are playing, uh, there is a there's an open field in Ajax, the Apple Applecroft uh, right. field, where you know we usually go on the in the weekend, like in the morning, and we play right in the center. We haven't changed anything. We just Got use it. like the center part as a pitch. Yeah. Play. That's the the field behind Roberta Bondar. Yeah, I believe it's, it is. It's near the food basics, like uh, West Mead. Yeah. yeah. And, Okay, okay, either, either way. So with this uh, distinction of having that patch there, so you're saying it wouldn't compromise like soccer games if they were using it for that as well, because they would just play accordingly, correct? Yes, sir, not, not at all, yes, sir. Uh, okay. Like it can be played, like, you know, you can just run on it, no problem. All right, thank you. And and then what what you're asking for tonight is that you have, specific times rather than you guys, sorry, that everyone's showing up, you're asking if you could actually block book, you know, a 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. on a Saturday in a public park. Is that, is that what you're proposing or asking? That kind uh, of thing? Sir, my, uh, like our primary proposal is basically, first of all, town of Ajax allow it to happen, right? Like obviously by the bylaws right now, we cannot do any kind of like modifications, right? So right. okay. my my request is like, you know, if this can be like taken into consideration and then yes, like for example, if that can be allowed as a time, uh, like, you know, a time patch where it can be allowed, that would be great. But obviously it is an open field and we cannot really say, or we cannot really ask you to like, you know, block it for a particular game, right? Like we don't want to like reflect that, but yes, if it can be done, then yes, for sure. When, run, one more really quick question, sorry. Um, so, have you approached anybody on staff yet, or is this your first time sort of coming? Uh, I, I actually had a um, brief uh, talk about this with uh, um, Councilor uh, Marilyn Crawford. Okay. And um, so, Great. she actually advised me, like, you know, this, this something can be brought yeah. forward. Thank you, Mr. Singh. And uh, we'll, we'll talk. Thank you. Councilor Henry, you're next. 
Thank you. Um, through the mayor, um, can I ask questions of staff at this time as well? Not just Mr. Singh, is that okay? This is no, this is questions to the delegate. Only to point. the delegate. Okay, so has this been done in any other municipality thus far? Um, Ma'am, we are in talk with uh, with B as well, and uh, it has been taken with a with a positive approach uh, for sure. And they are also like you know in talk right now uh, to bring in. Um, we actually started playing like you know last year uh, uh, in the in the region here, and I I saw like this kind of like a potential or maybe like a possibility. So I just brought in forward like you know this season. Uh, like before the start of the season, if this is something which can be done, but yes, uh, with me, um, and like Ajax is where I have currently proposed, um, and I'm, I'm we're, we're getting like a positive uh, feedback for this for sure. And are you set on on a particular location? Like, are you set on Applecroft as being that location? Could it be? Could it be Arc? Could it be the waterfront? Yes, like uh, anywhere. Like uh, um, if so. Um, it's it's kind of like a soccer field requirement in terms of size. So anything which is about 200, 200 feet to three hundred square feet, um, like a playing field, it can be done anywhere. It doesn't have to be like at a specific location as long as it gives us like as a flat ground um, and you know like uh, enough space to uh, to play. That that would be good enough to actually do that. Applecroft is just like that field used to be like available, so we were like playing there. So are you are you are you affiliated or aware or have contacted the other um, cricket leagues that I know there's one in South Ajax and I've been approached by a league of 70 men in North Ajax. Is there any affiliation with those leagues? Um, so we have like our club is a nonprofit organization like registered uh, club right now and we are in talk with not like I would not say affiliation but we are in talk with different leagues as well to, uh, with the cricket league for example um, and like uh, our other admin people are in talks with different teams in the region as well um, it's it's kind of like a similar ask like you know uh, you would just need like places to play to be honest and that Okay, I, I, I'm very much in support of cricket, just to put that out there. I, I do have concerns with it being on a soccer field. I, I know you're saying that um, it won't affect the soccer field, but I was I, I coached soccer through Missouri for many years and any little thing on the field, I found made a difference. I, but I'm not opposed to having this in the town at all. I think it's a great idea. And, and and I would ask through the mayor at an appropriate time, we could contact staff about other locations when, when it's right to do so. But thank you for your time and very much in support of cricket. Thank you. Thank you so much. And sorry, just to like add in like real quick, like when I said soccer field, I just took like an example. We're not looking for like those which has like a floodlights, any any open field pretty much. Uh, that'll be cool. I'd love Thank to you see you playing down at, at down at the open waterfront one day. That's I'd love to see that. I think that would be beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Actually, okay. one of the questions was um, who had asked it? Did Rob you ask had they discussed this with any other staff? I I think this has been discussed with staff. Uh, is Mr. Meredith here? Um, yes, I am. Mr. Meredith, I, I believe you've already reviewed this, haven't you? Or had this so, discussion? So on uh, middle of last week, I did have the opportunity to speak to um, Aditya about his request. Uh, what he is asking for is actually in alignment with what we are doing and what council has approved in the capital budget this year. So as you remember in the Parks and Recreation Master Plan, we'd identified a number of underutilized both baseball diamonds and soccer fields that could be repurposed, including for the use of, of cricket. And that is something that we're actually going through the exercise right now. We're looking at two or three locations, including Applecroft, including other parks in North Ajax to introduce new cricket infrastructure this year. So it is something that I indicated we would reach out to the DTN and his group, as well as others that we're hearing from in terms of you know, going through what our thoughts and proposals are, making sure it's in alignment with their requests and how we would utilize and permit the facilities for um, for those locations. But 
but it is very much in line with the direction that we're headed. Okay, so I just, I, I, I thought that, I just wanted to confirm. So that's fine. We don't need to dwell on it. It's in, it is in staff's hands, and this is in alignment with what we are already doing. So we'll leave it with staff to follow up with, with Mr. Singh and, and Mr. Saxena. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for your, for your delegation. Thank you so much, sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. Moving on to our next delegation, Stop Pedestrian Road Violence in Ajax, Elliot Kelly, Ajax Landowner. Elliot, are you ready? Yes. Okay, please go ahead. You'll have five minutes. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Town Councilors, Delegations, and guests. My name is Elliot Kelly, and I am an Ajax landowner, and I work at an Ajax employer. But because I must walk across Kingston Road to reach work, I'm scared for my life every day. I'm the victim of repeated traffic violence in Ajax because four times now, I was almost killed by being struck by a motorist as I walked in the crosswalk to cross Kingston Road. As a large vehicle rushes towards me unexpectedly while I am vulnerably in front of two lanes of traffic, I feel terrified and helpless. Some of the motorists shouted and honked, but every motorist sped off, abandoning me to cross the road distraught and discarded. I felt violated and isolated, so I reached out for help. And these were some of the responses that I got. The most common one was something like this. Oh, but it is the fault of these distracted drivers, these careless, negligent, reckless drivers. But it's easy to blame the drivers. Another response I got was, oh, but where is the law enforcement to guard against law breaking? I asked the Durham Regional Police, but the officers were callous to pedestrian peril and mystified for how to enforce the law, mystified for how to enforce the law. Think about that. Another response I got was this, oh, but did you have the walk sign? Was it dark out? Were you wearing dark colored clothing? Just think about how these questions sound. I heard an anecdote from one of the regional counselors that since the pandemic restrictions lifted, drivers have taken up a devil may care attitude, but I don't buy it. These vehicles are the same and the roads are the same and the drivers are the same, but herein lies the key to solve our problem of road violence when we agree to build a road for speed first then the road will provide the potential for speed. And this is what our town did, but the speed was hidden under traffic congestion. COVID lifted the congestion and laid bare the design of our roads. But hold on, hold on, stop, just, just hold on. I'm not here to advocate for immediate, widespread, permanent changes. It is foolhardy to believe that any of us know the one true best way to design our town for each of our neighbors and for all time. COVID has humbled us in our illusion that we know what is coming and taught us better to stay light and flexible rather than heavy and plodding with our plans and actions. At the organization called Strong Towns that, that I'm a member of, we, we practice a simple four-step process for public investment. Number one, humbly observe where people in the community struggle. Number two, ask the question, what is the next smallest thing that we can do right now to address that struggle? Number three, do that. Do that right now. And number four, repeat. The town of Ajax and the region of Durham have a way of doing things that get bogged down in studies and meetings. But Strong Towns has a response to this, which is agile enough for overnight implementation. Another four-step process. Step one, state your objective. Number two, use standards for temporary road construction that we already have at hand. 
Step three, monitor and assess. And then step four, transition to permanence. I had the opportunity to speak with the manager of transportation planning for the town of Ajax. And he said, vision zero matters here in Ajax, dignity matters, safety matters. And we have plans for Scarborough Durham coming down the line. I was a landowner. I am a landowner in Ajax. I take public transportation to work in Ajax. I have lived for 10 of the last 14 years in Ajax. Two of my four children were born in Ajax. My family and friends live in Ajax and I care about this town and what we do right now to make it safe for all road users. Let us use every tool we have to take action right now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kelly, are you aware that Kingston Road is a regional road, not yes, a town of Ajax Road? Yes. And being a regional road, it's not something that we have control over. It's not something that we pay for. It's not something that we, we manage in any way. But that's right. You, you do not manage the road. I, I'm aware of that. Yes. Okay. So I, I just I just think that your delegation may be more fitting to be at the region than at the town since it's not our jurisdiction. Well, in my example, I gave Kingston Road, but that is not the only one. I live in No, no, no. It was that wasn't a question. <laughs> yeah. I just that was a statement. It, it's I, I heard you. Thank you. But uh, you did say Kingston Road, and Kingston Road is not. I understand we have traffic issues all over town. I was just asking you if you were aware that Kingston Road, which you cited is not our road. So were there any other questions from members of council to the delegate? Hearing seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Kelly, for your delegation. Moving on to our next one. Um, I'm going to need a motion to waive the rules to allow uh, the delegation from just one minute. Uh, Mr. Vic Jagmahan wants to speak to the sign bylaw that's on tonight's agenda, but I will require a motion. Can I get a mover and a seconder? Actually, I do. From Councillor Henry and Count Councillor Henry moving, Councillor Lee seconding to waive the rules to allow the delegation. This will require two-thirds. Those in favor? One, two, three, four. That meets two-thirds. The delegation is allowed. Mr. Jagmahan, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. I see you on the screen. Uh, please go ahead with your delegation and you'll have five minutes. Good evening. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you, the members of council, for allowing me to um, uh, come in on the meeting tonight, uh, sort of at the last minute. Um, as I mentioned to Jason previously, I was unaware uh, of this until it was posted publicly, so I could jump in and request to, to have a delegation. Appreciate you guys having me, uh, you know, say a few words in regards to it. Um, with regards to the, the motion set forth in 9.1, my, my major concerns with it is simply that you know, the, the motion, and I'm sure the council is aware of it, whoever's listening, um, is basically the, the signage for temporary signs or mobile signs or loudspeaker signs. Um, we recently ran a campaign in the election in October of 2022, and we feel as a campaign, this, this particular motion is brought forth uh, specifically for our campaign. Um, the reason why we use, you know, adver mobile advertising mechanisms and speaker systems, uh, your worship, as well as council, is for the sheer fact that we were unable to, as a new candidate, uh, entering the town of Ajax elections where bylaws were passed in the last uh, elections or thereafter, I believe it was, um, where you weren't allowed to put any signage on public access roads, only on private citizens' home. Uh, with us being new to the campaign or relatively newer to elections, uh, there was very few mechanisms for us to you know, market, advertise, get the word out to potential voters that, a, we were running in the elections and B, what our platforms were. Um, yes, you can do direct mail outs to people, you can door knock, but there's a lot of other ways that, you know, the signage helped. Um, I'd mentioned to Councillor Lee when I met him at the ARC when we had a meeting there um, with regards to elections. And, you know, we explained to him that it's almost like a form of voter suppression where a lot of people were unaware in Ajax of, a, of an election happening. Now, uh, there was, there was uh, I guess there was, payments made to various community organizations, which allowed uh, for members who were running as candidates or you know, the mayor, whoever it was, that was a part of it. And they would be able to have the ability to speak to citizens or potential voters. Well, there was one such uh, that happened at the ARC, which had, uh, I believe 29 people is what we are, we counted. Very few 
citizens were aware that there was an election. Um, now, the town of Ajax might say, well, you know, we've done our, our part in terms of advising the general public. We just feel like putting this mechanism in place as a motion to stop this form of, uh, you know, getting the word out about uh, potential votes in, in the town of Ajax is only going to further suppress whatever votes we did have. I asked for if there was a potential count of what the voter turnout was in 2022 elections compared to maybe the past two elections. And I didn't receive that. And I'm not sure if that's available. That can be discussed as well. Uh, all we're simply trying to get across is that having to implement this and stopping potential candidates who are running existingly or new candidates to be able to get the word out. How, how, are, how is anyone supposed to, A, want to run in the town of Ajax in an election? And how do we get the word out to potential voters is really what our main concern is, uh, Your Worship. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Jagmohan? Councillor Henry. I, I would suggest, Councillor Henry, the fact that you are here clearly shows that without signs, you are able to beat an incumbent. This is my comment. Go ahead. Wow. <laughs> so loaded, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> that took 12 years. And um, I'm going to, okay, so. Mr. Uh, can I just call you Vic? Would that be okay? Yes, please. A lot okay. easier. Okay, Vic, and you can call me Nancy. I'm fine with that. Uh, we don't know each other. We've met each other once at uh, ARC, um, and you actually uh, supported the person that ran against me. So there's there's no allyship between you and I in any way. And I just want to know how people responded to you at the doors, the ones that you did get to, with regards to what you have just said about the change from before and uh, what, you, what you used in this election, uh, what you felt you had to use to get the message out. How, how was your response at the doors to those you did talk to? So to be very honest with you, uh, Nancy, um, you know, when, when speaking to voters, we've got to understand this day and age, uh, everyone is glued to their mobile devices. Everyone is glued to different forms of advertising. The traditional mechanism that we had of uh, being able to door knock and get to people, um, we're knocking our teams. Are not, so we, we entered into the race with the hopes of being able to see, you know, being an uh, Ajax resident for almost 18 years now, to see what there was to make a difference in, in our area where we were. Um, and, and saying that, knocking doors only goes to a very limited space. Um, with being new to a campaign or new to elections or my, my, my very first time running, um, you knock as many doors as you can. The problem is, is a lot of people are not home. You could take the information as a seasoned politician. They might obviously, as, as, as you alluded to, you've been, you've, you ran 12 years now. It's your third time, I believe, running in the municipal elections. Um, and yes, you did get in there now, as, the, as uh, your worship did mention. And I mean, you would have built up over the last 12 years a plethora of support with local community organizations, um, local voting people, whether they're in the town of Ajax or outside of Will family here. Um, we are looking at the ability to be able to advertise to people or let people know that there's an election in every different district that I know people within Brampton, Barry, wherever there was a municipal election. I, I mean, I'm in business and I know a lot of different people, not only that are politicians, but local citizens. They were, they were pretty taken back. They're like, Ajax had an election. We didn't see anything anywhere. We didn't know about it. Now I get it. There's election signs placed on private property, but these are, these are uh, plastic signs or signage that tends to blow off. They get broken. I've seen many of the mayor signs broken. I saw many of, of Sterling Lee's signs broken. I've seen many of Marilyn Crawford's signs broken. The wind is there. We, we, we live, wintertime is happening. So the issue is we're just trying to get the word out. And the way you're able to get the word out is, we found that the mobile advertisement worked. We didn't find that it was, uh, it, it didn't disrespect anyone. It wasn't coming at anyone as far as uh, the way and the mechanism we used. The loudspeaker that was on there, Nancy simply just advertised that, hey, vote for us. Here's the campaign, here's the election. If anything, people said to us that we did a service to the town of Ajax by advertising there was an election happening because they had no idea there was an election happening. I'm going to be honest with you. I heard the same thing that you did, and I don't know you, so it's not like you and I have spoke about this, but I heard the exact same thing. And I, when I saw you come by, I took a video of you. I was in shock 
wasn't thrilled you had my competitor on there with you. However, welcome to elections, guys. <laughs> however, it was smart. It was smart advertising, in my opinion, and I fault you nothing for that. Um, I, I would have to agree with most of what you've said there. And I, I heard that at the doors for me, it was hard because I have an accessibility issue. It was very hard to get to the doors. So thank you for your time here today. Much appreciated. Thank you, thank you for speaking and coming forward. That's all I have to say. I, I no disrespect to my colleagues. I, I can't support this motion, but thank you. Thank, thank you, Nancy. Thank you. The motion is not yet on the floor. It'll be coming later on the meeting. Councillor Crawford, please go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say um, thank you for coming out and uh, and giving us uh, your um, your viewpoint on the, on this motion. Um, if I could just go back, um, what we often find is candidates that have run in elections, we only ever see them at elections. Um, one of the probably one of the hardest non elected people that I ever met was Rob Tyler Moran. Uh, four years, four years, he attended more meetings than I did. Four years, he was not getting paid at all. He was at every event, every single thing. He, by the time he actually put his name in the ring, he had attended all the meetings that I had gone to. Um, everybody knew who he was because he had attended the meetings. Uh, when he went to the door, he spoke, he knew exactly what was going on. Um, and so I feel like, like if you really have a, an interest in running in the election, the election is the election. It's like, how long is the election, right? But um, having your face visible in the community long before you decide to go into an election is far more important and understanding how this town runs, how understanding, like you can put your name anywhere, even, even people with signs, even when we had the sign bylaw. Um, it, it's like your visibility within the town and getting involved in the town speaks volumes to the people who live here. Um, and so I agree that, you know, the sign, it was, it was a weird election, not having signs on the, the most obvious spaces um, on the main roads and all that kind of thing. But I feel like, I feel like election time isn't just for that brief six weeks. I feel that if you really want to get, um, you know, hooked into being uh, on council, it takes a lot more time and, and effort than that, that, that time frame, in my opinion. And I've been at this now uh, three terms as a, a trustee, two terms as a local, my second term as a regional counselor. And, uh, and, you know, and, and I still, I still keep going at that. So I feel like, I feel like the signs are helpful in name recognition, but I feel like getting involved in the town is even more important. Just my, my comments. Uh, do you have a question, Councillor Crawford? No, sorry, I don't. Sorry. And see, I still this get is, in trouble. This is <laughs> so, questions. No. Questions I, to the delegate at this point. That, we can speak to that the sign by is law not a question. when it's I can on probably the floor. go up in my voice, but there's no question. Okay. Sorry. Was there any questions to the delegation? I just have I just have a couple. And I mean I mean, no disrespect, but but sir, you you did have a lot of signs out there on boulevards. Um they were illegal. But they were out there, and I know our staff picked up many of them. So, um, how do you explain that? Because you did, of all the candidates, you probably had the most signs out on boulevards. So I'm not understanding your your delegation and and how you feel because you did have signs out. Right. So, if we're going to address the signs, Your Worship, many of the signs that were that were put out. A was again, uh, you know, forgive my ignorance to this whole process. As as Marilyn referred to, we're very new to the campaign. We try to follow as many rules as we can. We have volunteers who are part of it. Telling a volunteer to put a sign up in a particular area doesn't necessarily constitute that they're actually going to do it when they're supposed to do it. The signs that were put up in many areas, as well, your worship, were taken down illegally based on having conversations. Uh, with different members of, of uh, you know, the bylaw department after the fact. We picked up all the signs. We explained our situation to them. We paid whatever fees we had to pay. But there was signage placed on areas that were private property that were taken down. To this day, no one has explained to us why those signs were taken down. There were signs put up in different areas where you had signs up as well, uh, your worship, and Ashmeet Khan had signage there. But your signs were still remaining, and our signs were taken down. Why that was done was very mysterious to us to this day. I, um, I can ex I can explain that because those were private property 
And I had mm-hmm. spoken with the landowners and got permission in writing. And the landowners removed your signs because you placed them next to ours, but you didn't ask permission. There would this be is, one this such is area, the problem. Uh, Your Worship. There would have been one such area, which was uh, across from the Rawson Landing, which is at Harwood and Rawson. Beyond that space, there was a home where Patrice Barnes, the MP, had a space. She was using that as well, too. We had spoken to her about putting the signs up, unfortunately, I guess through the shuffle. No one, she wasn't aware of it, and the other people weren't. You guys took our signs down fine. But, I mean, you guys could say that the, the landowners took it down. Whoever took it down, we don't have any proof of that. If you guys have proof of that, no one communicated to us, Your Worship, to say, hey, okay. Mr. Jagmohan, your team put signs up illegally on this property. I don't think I don't think the election is gone. I'm not here to argue a point of election, Your Worship. What I'm simply saying is moving forward in 2026 and for future elections, if we're going to stop all the bylaws and put all the bylaws in place to stop signage in, in boulevards and wherever public property you're able to put election signage, um, wh- how does a candidate get the word out? And I understand, Marilyn, what you refer to as, you know, you've been a trustee, you've been a counselor, you've been a regional counselor. That's 20 plus years that you've been a politician. You've had the ability to build that rapport. Someone new to the elections doesn't mean they don't care about Ajax because they don't attend all the, the, the meetings like Rob Tyler Moore prior to becoming uh, a counselor or joining or, or entering his name into the hat. I mean, everyone has different lives that they lead. Someone could decide six months prior to, or they could decide six weeks prior to going into election, or, or there's other members who have been lifelong politicians who enjoy this, or they've done it, they had members of their family and different people. So everyone chooses at different times to get involved in politics. I don't think that, makes, that should be a, a negative on them because they decided at a different time than someone else to enter. But it should be a fair enough space where anyone can enter it and anyone can can have the ability to either win or lose, but it's done in a proper manner. Okay, but so uh, so my, my question my question was about your illegal sign. So let's move on. About the, the truck. Are you aware that in our sign bylaw we have sign limitations for the size, or sorry, size limitations for the size of signs? Correct. Okay. And that is about one meter by one meter, or 1.2 meters. Okay. Are you Those aware are of that? static signs, though. Uh, no, election sign is election sign. Those truck signs far exceeded our allowable sizes for signs. And you said you're aware of that. But are you aware of the number of complaints we received from the volume of the music? So it wasn't music for truck about your <laughs> Your Worship, it wasn't music at any point. Okay, what, whatever it was. It was simple was. announcements that were no musical background. It was just okay. a simple voiceover. So we did receive complaints about that from residents, okay. which is why we are looking to amend. When the motion comes, it's as a result of the complaints received by, and I'm not saying your truck, but by election vehicles which is i think probably not something that was considered before but now it's happened and we're aware of it and the problems it's caused we have to address it well your worship in in all fairness and this is a a council meeting um jason and nicole were aware of our campaign um we were the only ones sir that used any form of mobile advertising during the last campaign so to say that it came not necessarily from our campaign or someone else it sort of makes no sense. It's directly related to us because no one okay. else did it. We were, right? Um, as far as the complaints, we were never told at any point that there was any such complaint. I did review on one of the forms that you posted on your worship several times that you saw the truck. It was quite ridiculous and our campaign must have waited. It's too bad they wasted their entire budget. Your exact quote, too bad you wasted an entire budget on such advertisement. They should have door knocked. This is exactly what your, your comment said. I don't have it captioned, but my team member has it. And I don't really see why you, as a sitting mayor at that point, yes, and an election, why that would be something you would comment on. Like that. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe, again, I'm new to the campaign stuff. So maybe that's something you're able to do or you, you do. I, I don't know. No, I don't recall that comment, but it sounds like something I might say. Anyway, you. thank you for answering my questions and thank you for your delegation. I don't see any more hands up. Thank you. Moving on to first presentation, recognition of Durham West Lightning. We have Bob Hunt, head coach. Sorry, let me just change screens here. Bob Hunt, head coach, Durham West Lightning, and Brad Can, assistant coach, Durham West Lightning. And I think there's a number of members for the team here as well. Is that 
through Mr. Clerk. There, I see Mr. Mr. Hunt on the screen. I see Mr. Can on the screen. Um, I have some comments, if you wouldn't mind, gentlemen. Sure. Let me find this. So, uh, we've invited the Durham West Lightning to join us today following their recent historic win. For the first time in its 63-year history, the International Pee Wee Hockey Tournament in Quebec City offered a girls division, and the Durham West Lightning U13 AA team took home the gold. This tournament featured teams from across Canada, America, and Europe, and our Ajax Partnership Fund had provided a grant of $5,000 to the team to help with the cost of attending this tournament and to show our support for women and girls in sport. Team was watched as the team I understand is watching online and joining us for the meeting, I've already said, is head coach Bob Hunt and assistant coach Brad Can. Uh, I just would like to say, and just Mr. Clerk, let me just look, could you please put, um, put this on the screen? There we go. Uh, I would like to, uh, on behalf of Ajax Council, pretend, present you with the following certificates um, in honor of that win. To the Durham West Lightning Corporation of the Town of Ajax extends congratulations on achieving gold at the International Pee Wee Hockey Tournament in Quebec City, Quebec in February 2023. And as Mayor of the Town of Ajax, and on behalf of all members of Council, it is a great pleasure to congratulate you on being an active and engaged member of the community. So I think we can all clap to that. Uh, such an impressive, it, it's funny, I'll just, before I turn it over to you for comments, I um, got a message from somebody I was actually in the military with back in the 80s, who I haven't talked to in 30 something years, but we're friends on social media. And last time I saw him was Sydney, Nova Scotia, but he's from Quebec City. And I guess he knows that I'm mayor of Ajax and he is texting me, messaging me and sending me pictures of this event that he's at in Quebec saying about the Durham West Lightning um, winning the gold and everything else. So I heard about it first from there and then tuned in to watch. And, and so very, very impressive. I just thought that was very interesting that then my old friend who I haven't seen in 30 plus years, Denis Poulin, reached out to me and let me know about this. So that's how far it reached and just, I would like to turn it over to see if uh, Bob or Brad, if you wanted to, to make any comments or any member of your team. Yeah, I guess I can start. I, I just really would like to uh, extend our appreciation um, for your support from Ajax. Um, it, it helped tremendously. Um, I've been involved with Durham West Lightning for uh, four years myself and with my daughter uh, helping me coach. Um, this was the first year we were able to get into the uh, Quebec tournament. I attended it myself uh, way back when in the, uh, in the early seventies. So uh, for me to be able to go back with my own team of 12 year old girls um, supported by our town, supported by some very large corporations um, was, was amazing. Um, the experience was uh beyond belief that girls were treated uh, professionally. Uh, every game was televised. We had anywhere from three to 10,000 fans in the stadium, in the arena. Um, yeah, it was just an amazing experience. And to be supported by the town was, uh, was tremendous. And um, we have our championship banner, um, hopefully being raised uh, through the summer uh, at pad one at the ACC, um, which all the girls have signed. Um, we had publicity all worldwide. Um, uh, we played Switzerland. There was teams from England, teams from France. Um, there was news in the Asia, in the Asian area, in Taiwan. Um, we, we made the news all over the place and um, Durham West was, was right there up front. Um, and we had uh, the town of Ajax on our backs too. So just want to extend our appreciation. I don't know if uh, Coach Brad wants to say anything else. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Um, I would just expend the same gratitude of, of the town of Ajax. And Mr. Mayor, your comments are greatly appreciated. You know, I think in the era that we are today, and I have two daughters, and, and the ability to kind of, you know, I would say enhance the level of 
sophistication and female leadership and all the things that really matter in today's society is to, to have your support and, and see where you can we, we can elevate the glass ceiling of female empowerment is really, really important. And so, you know, I, I was lucky enough, like Bob, to play in this event in 1990 um, and something you'll always remember, but these girls will have memories for the rest of their lives. It was the first event and, and we really do thank you for, for your leadership and, and supporting us through this. But ultimately, you know, I've been in the business career for 20 years and I will say that my sports career has led me to be successful in business because uh, adversity, character and integrity are all things that are happening in sports. And, and ultimately that's what we're trying to drive home for these girls and, you know, the ability to, see, to, to have success has been really great. So I just want to say thank you and the rest of your team for your uh, contributions to allow us to be successful in this business uh, in terms of getting the girls to, to Quebec and, and providing financial support for the family. So I just want to say thanks. Oh, we appreciate that. And, and congratulations again. I'm so glad to see, and this is all of council supported creation of the Ajax Partnership Fund um, as a way to put funds back into the community for great causes like this. So I'm really, really glad to see um, that it's working and it's being put to, to, um, to towards, towards some great things and great achievements. So congratulations. I do see a couple of councils with hands up. Councilor Lee, you have questions? I actually have a question, Chair. Um, thank you, uh, delegates. Congratulations, uh, doing Ajax and Durham proud. I guess my question is, where's the trophy right now? So I see a few people on there. Who, who's, got, who's holding the trophy right now? Um, well, the main trophy stayed in Quebec. So the Durham West Lightning are the first name on that trophy and will always be for all of history. Um, and uh, if you want to give me a second, I can go run downstairs and show you the trophy we brought home. I'll maybe let Coach Brad answer a couple questions while I get it. Yeah, sure. that'd be great. And uh, Chair, that's all my questions. And uh, yeah, congratulations again to the entire team. Okay, hey, Councilor Tyler Moore, and your hand is just, up. Just very quickly, uh, Your Worship. Um, Brad, Ms. Mr. Kent, how, how long have you been coaching, sir? How long have you been? Uh, yeah, great question. Um, I guess my oldest daughter is 14, so I think she started playing hockey around six. So it's been, you know, in excess of 10 years. 10 years. And and but Mr. Hunt, Bob, has been in the game a long time. He has, yeah. I think it's you know 20 plus years in his coach. Right. So if we do 20, you know, like put in all those years. Interesting because I think it's, it's, yeah, it's, we're it's, just it's, asking, it's, asking you, Mr. Hunt, how long you've been coaching, managing? Uh, I've been coaching um, female hockey. Ah, oh, boy, uh, pretty close to 20 years. Uh, yeah. I started so, years and years ago with my, my sister, and I have two daughters as well that that's have great. played hockey. That's great. I just wanted to, to, to ask you those two questions because that means hundreds, if not close to a 1,000 kids that you've helped steer correctly in, in our community. It's never been more important and really, really appreciate that, as well as the big one in Quebec. So proud of everyone, and congratulations. I don't know. There if you go. Here's the trophy, and there's the the female championship there. Perfect. All in French. So that's the trophy we were able to bring home. The cup that stays in Quebec is a very large silver um, mug type of trophy. Uh, um, I think we've uh, there's uh, we have a web um, an Instagram page that I think you you'll be able to see and also the Quebec tournament uh, put out an Instagram with uh, us, with our team. So, but again, very much appreciated your, your support of council and the mayor. Thank you. Awesome. Happy to. Congratulations again, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. Moving on to our next presentation. We have uh, 2022 to 2026 strategic plan. Christy McLarty, Manager of Public and Strategic Affairs. It's not Christy. Here we go, Ms. McLarty, whenever you're ready. Good evening, Chair and Councillors. 
After an ambitious eight week planning process, I'm pleased to present the proposed strategic plan for the 2022-26 term, which we've coined Action 26. I will be presenting the core elements of Action 26 and the proposed plan tonight and pending council's approval, a final plan will be designed and released publicly in the coming months. As custom, we initiate a strategic plan process at the outset of every term. The process includes extensive public engagement, council, SMT, senior management planning, staff consultation, and a series of approvals. The town leverages the strategic plan process as a mechanism to identify priorities, guide decision-making, and shape work plans and budgets over the four-year council term. So about action 26, the proposed framework for this term includes a community promise, three pillars and 13 key priorities. We intentionally created an overarching and living document that can be modified as we navigate through the term. The, the plans that we develop um, are often very dynamic and fluid in order to ensure flexibility throughout the years um, as we move and navigate uh, through different um, factors, including budgets, capacity issues, and just circumstances in general, as we've seen last term with the pandemic. For this uh, term, we are recommending the continued use of the community promise we developed in 2018, which is we strive to be leaders in all that we do and foster a vibrant, uh, innovative and connected community. This was a promise that we started in 2018 and we tested it again during our engagement sessions at the beginning of this process and it continued to resonate deeply with the residents in the community and um, area organizations. So I'm going to take you through the proposed pillars and priorities. I'm not going to get uh, too in depth um, at this point tonight, but I do want to take you through the 13 priorities that I had mentioned. I think it's important that we do highlight them. So please uh, bear with me as I walk through three slides um, and, and just high level the, the priorities so that the community is aware. And as, as we move forward, they will be able to research and read more about the plan. So for pillar one, number one, um, um, which is connecting our community, we have five priorities under this section. The first priority is to increase and amplify creative and innovative opportunities, followed by encourage community pride, then improve well-being and quality of life, followed by foster a safe and welcoming community, and lastly, champion inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility. That totals five for connecting our community. The second uh, pillar is growing our community, under which we have three priorities. They include embrace a, a dynamic and embrace dynamic and sustainable growth. Excuse me, there advance innovation and investment, and finally invest in the changing recreational needs of a growing community. This priority section also includes um, a majority of the supporting and strongest actions that we have in the plan. Lastly, we have pillar three, which is modernizing our community. Under this pillar, we have five priorities and they include lead the green transition, rethink the way we communicate, equip our workforce for the future, ready our organization for the future and demonstrate sound financial management. I'm sure after hearing me re uh, read through those that there's something that resonates even directly uh, with you, Council, as one of your main priorities that you wanted to see um, achieved throughout this term of Council. Finally, I just wanted to provide an update on the action plan itself, um, uh, which um, is part of your report and part of the uh, agenda. It's Appendix 1 in tonight's agenda and the report, and it includes uh, 156 supporting actions it's a very ambitious plan. I understand it to be the largest that we've had um, since the initiation of the strategic plan process um, approximately 20 years ago. So again, the town is being ambitious and leading in terms of what we'd like to see accomplished. 
Uh, 53 of those are actions that are going to be ongoing as we start the term. Some of them may close as we end and complete as we go through the years, but we are starting them as ongoing and 92 are slated to be completed by the end of 2024. And why I reference the end of 2024 is because we are going to host a midterm council strategic plan session to reevaluate um, the act, the priorities and actions to ensure that everything is relevant and we're on the plan and, uh, and, and we're going to achieve what we need to achieve this term. So. It, in 2024, if there are items that need to be shifted, moved around, condensed, um, we in, merged, um, we intend to take that time to do that and then present an update to the community and to the public. So with that, uh, that concludes the presentation. I wanted to make sure that I was as succinct as possible tonight. I know we have a, a hefty agenda. But before I end, I just want to um, announce that tomorrow the mayor will be unveiling the framework during his 7 p.m. Live with the Mayor event um, and access is via ajax.ca. So I encourage um, the community to log on and participate in that virtual session. And as I, as I mentioned, and as I've committed, the complete final document will be released in the, in the coming months and that will be available through our website and printed copies will be made available uh, from our, our facilities as well. So that concludes the presentation and I'm open to any questions. Thank you, Ms. McClarty. Uh, Council Tyler Warren, you were first. Thank you, Your Worship. I don't know if this is the right time, but I have a um, an amendment I wanted to bring forth. Should I let questions, how do you want to do this? Or no, this is just a presentation. We're not on the report yet. Got it. Thank you. Councillor Henry? Actually, I might want to wait too, but I will say um, to Christy and her team, thank you very much. As my first strategic meeting, that was wonderful. And thank you. Have a good time. Well, let me let me be helpful. Let's bring the report forward and deal with it at this time. So Councillor Tyler Moore and ask your questions. Thank you. Councillor Henry. So um, just quickly, as I always say, Hopefully, I am. Actually, sorry, one second. Um, don't have which one. So I'm just going to have a mover and a seconder for this. Move by who wants to move the report? Move by Councillor Lee, second by Councillor Henry. And Mr. Clerk, can you put that back up for a second, please? That the 2022-2026 strategic plan action 26 including the framework and action plan att1 be approved now it's on the floor go ahead Councillor tonamore thank you so much okay so i'll tell you what i want to do or ask you what i want to do uh what i'd like to do is that the internal action plan monitor modernizing our community section 1.2 be amended to move the completion of the waste diversion in parks feasibility report to 2024 from 2026, and that P&D staff be directed to bring the feasibility report to the GGC General Government Committee meeting in April of 2024. And if I may just give a little bit of an explanation. Well, two, two things. One, do you have a seconder? Oh, sorry. Um, yes, I believe I have a seconder. I was asking uh, Regional Councillor Crawford. Thanks for flying me okay. in. Okay. And, and second, have you provided that wording to the clerk? Uh, that clerk, uh, that wording was from the clerk after okay. we discussed. So perhaps we can get the wording of the amendment on the screen and then we'll open it up for questions on the amendment. Yeah. Does the clerk have that? Am I being rather? So this is moving forward the items to do with the pet waste and correct. everything else. Is that correct? Okay. Do you want me to speak to it now or wait for the? Uh, you can go ahead. Um, it'll come up shortly. Okay. Um, while we were campaigning and pretty much the whole time I've been a counselor, a, a very consistent and deep ask from all our residents is that we do something about pet waste. A lot of the in parks, when people have the little bags, a lot of the garbage cans have been removed. We understand because people, there's been a lot of abuse, people bringing their home garbage to public garbage cans, which creates a big problem. But pet waste uh, is, a, is here, it's 2026. We would really like to see this come to fruition within this council term. And in order to do that, 
Um, we want to move this up to 2024. Um, that's the reason behind it. Um, there's some really innovative uh, items that obviously would be part of that, where they get recomposed in the ground, etc. I can't speak to it. Uh, but uh, that's that's my ask that we just move that up from 2026 to 2024. And uh, just okay. to the, um, the actual amount. Councilor, Councilor Crawford is a seconder. Correct. Oh, I have lots to say about this. Um, I do understand uh, our reluctancy to have a pet waste um, system because technically you're not allowed to, yeah, you know, technically you're not allowed to throw pet waste into garbage because it's a hazardous item. But because the region has now expanded their green bin program and when they have an anaerobic digester, we now have an avenue to which we can actually get rid of this waste in a proper way. So I think it's the perfect timing to be looking at, I don't know if it means putting an extra receptacle like that is only for pet waste beside the already recycling garbage kind of thing, but I really wanna see this implemented this term, that we come up with some kind of solution, we have the ability to clean it up, we have the place to take it. And I think that it's time that we address this issue that is, uh, Definitely, then, like I would say, one of the top issues um, that we deal with on a regular basis, as Rob said. So, thank you. Okay, uh, it's a little small. Can we zoom in on that a little bit, Mr. Clerk. Perfect. Uh, any other questions on the amendment? I oh, Councilor Henry, go ahead. Sorry, how does this affect the budget? Because the budget was really tight. Moving it forward, what does this do? Do we have to cut something? Not this year. It's to move it to 2024. Okay. So it would be to do in next year's budget. But um, I was about to ask some questions to staff on the timing as well. So through the chair, I will mention that this um, motion contemplates a feasibility report. So it will come back to council for consideration. And then um, if it meets the timeline associated with the budget, it could be considered then. If not, it might have to be an unbudgeted item through 2024. But it is to speak, it's not a guarantee. It's It, it really is about doing the feasibility, looking at options, um, different costs, and 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 the ability to to do the to see that project through, um, and it's just accelerating it from 2026 to 2024. Right. Yes. Right. And, and through the chair to staff, what does this look like? Is this townwide? Is this a ward only? Is it a pilot project? What does this look like by moving it forward? I think those I will Rob all be doing part this. Of the I think that means townwide. It is being considered townwide, and that the feasibility study would determine that, Councillor Henry. Okay. All right, thank you. And I don't have to ask my question anymore. Uh, for the record, so, yeah, we meant this to be townwide. It wasn't something. Everything's just... townwide. Yeah, yeah, just, <laughs> just telling you from our hearts. We're like, let's have them everywhere. Yeah. Okay, anything further on the amendment? Seeing, hearing none, those that supported the amendment. Uh, I can't see everybody on my screen. Just one second, let me change my... Uh, there we go. Uh, what did I see all hands? That's scary. Okay. Uh, further? Anything on the main motion? All right. We have the main motion moved by Councillor Lee, second by Councillor Henry. Those in support? Actually, you know what? Let's do a recorded vote. This one's important. Mayor Collier? In favor. Regional Councillor Crawford? In favor. Councillor Henry? In favor. Regional Councillor Lee? In favor. Councillor Tyler Morin? In favor. That carries. That carries unanimously. And I didn't speak to it because I forgot, but I will very quickly. Just Christy, thank you for all your hard work to you and to your team um, facilitating that great event a few weeks ago. Um, just for anybody that's watching, this is basically setting out our um, goals and objectives as a council for the next four years, what we want to achieve throughout this term of council, sort of here's where we are, here's where we want to be, and this is what we're going to do step by step by step to reach those goals and objectives, and now staff will, um, will make it happen. So uh, thank you to council as well 
for your for your direction on this and your support on all this. I think we've got some great items in there. Very, very aggressive. And I think we're going to really make some some very, very positive changes in the town moving forward over the next four years. So thank you. Moving on to our next item on the agenda is items of correspondence. So I understand we have a couple of polls. Councillor Crawford, do you wish to pull item number six to refer and nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 to endorse? Yes, that is exactly what I would like to do. Okay, I have on the balance, which is one, two, three, four, five, seven, and eight, and whatever comes after 13. Moved by Councillor Crawford, second by Councillor Council Tyler Morin, that items of correspondence be received. That the balance of the report dated March 27th be received for information. Those in favor? That's carried. Councillor Crawford, on item six. Uh, six or on nine? I'm not, I'm nine, 10, 11. Item Somebody six else. is just a motion to refer to staff. Oh, yes. Um, seconder, please. Second by Council Lee. Anybody wish to speak to it before I do? <laughs> Thank you. I'd ask Councillor Crawford to, to move this to refer. This is the motion passed at the last City of Pickering Council meeting requesting uh, information from the Town of Ajax with regards to the uh, expansion of the urban boundary settlement area and the development of the headwaters of the Carruthers and requesting feedback from us on uh, our comments on that matter. So I imagine we're going to be, uh, our staff are gonna be providing extensive comments uh, on this to do with the changes that have been made to the Municipal Comprehensive Review process at the region of Durham. So that will, just a question to staff, I assume that will be coming back to us when, do we know? Uh, Mr. Romanowski, are you here? Through the or chair, Ms. Endes? Through the chair before planning speaks, it's Christy. Are we referring to item number six? Uh, item number six, City of Pickering. Yep, I believe so, City of Pickering, Carruthers Creek Watershed, seeking an agreement from the Town of Ajax. Yes, yes. correct. That it, we, um, if you could, um, uh, clerks, if you could um, update the uh, motion that's before uh, Council tonight on that. Sorry, Mr. Sorry. Clarity, can we update the motion? Well, we, we do. Our, or you should have the motion right before you. It's separate. Yes, we, we understand that there's some instructions that come with the referral, so we can show those on the screen um, if, okay. if that's okay with Mayor Collier. Please. There we go. I'm sure this is exactly what Councillor Crawford was, was wanting to say. In the referral, <laughs> <laughs> be resolved that yes. the mayor sent a letter How did you know? of response to the city of Pickering, indicating the town A has not been consulted on the secondary plan for Northeast Pickering. B has not entered into an agreement with Dorset Pickering Limited or any other landowners in Northeast Pickering. C continues to support the protection of the Crothers Creek headwaters and maintains there are significant environmental and financial concerns pertaining to development in Northeast Pickering, which have not been satisfied. And D request city of Pickering, Northeast Pickering landowners group, and their consultants pause the secondary plan for Northeast Pickering to satisfy concerns through consultation with the town. And two, the mayor sent a letter to the Honorable Steve Clark, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, requesting that the decision on Pickering MZO request to develop the Crothers Creek headwaters in Northeast Pickering be deferred until the town has been consulted and concerns regarding the project have been satisfied. So on that, just question to, to Ms. Sanders, and I'm just gonna very quickly go back and read exactly what the item of correspondence is because I um your worship can I just ask a really quick yep question? you go ahead while I'm um, looking at this did did I move this yes I moved this okay sorry I wasn't sure if I moved it or if I was chairing so okay never mind I'm I'm good now I'm caught up well uh, I can move it but I'd be directing myself to write letters yeah yeah no 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 I'm fine <laughs> just just trying to understand my responsibility Okay, so what the motion from Pickering is asking is that the town of Ajax would advise the city of Pickering if their concerns pertaining to the watershed on Crothers Creek have been satisfied, 
and or if they've entered in any agreement with Dorset Pickering Limited or any of the landowners in Northeast Pickering. Okay, so that satisfies. So that's fine. No questions, Steph. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure we weren't putting something in stone here that I might need to come back for an amendment later if it didn't fit exactly right. So uh, anything further on this? Councillor Henry. So up to date, as a new councillor, I have not I have not fully seen. I've seen some of it, but not all of it. Are we planning on having? Dorsey come back to the town of Ajax and discuss this further in a meeting setting? The easy answer to that one is a no. Uh, they haven't discussed it with us in the first place. They made a presentation years ago. Uh, I asked them for certain items and certain, certain um, assurances and did not get those. We are very clear on our positions of this council on development of the Headwaters of the Brothers. Many times, I think we passed many motions opposing it. Uh, so no, I don't expect Dorsey to come back and make any any delegations or presentations to us. And if they were willing to, would we be willing to receive them? Well, I believe you've had a conversation with them. I had one at a party, yes. And I asked okay. about the information. I was told that they would come forth and do a presentation for me. I'm asking councillors in general, would we be willing to receive that information in general as a council? I don't know how appropriate that, that question is to council on the floor. I can just tell you, I have talked to them. They have shown me the Varane development, but other than that, there's been no further discussions. Everything has gone through the landowners group and the region for the Municipal Comprehensive Review Project. How long ago was that discussion? Can I ask? Like off the top of your head, I'm not going to hold you to it. Start of the term. Of this Start of term? 20, maybe 2018, 2019. Oh, the last term, the last term. Yeah. Okay. All right. So nothing since then between the two of you? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Anything further on the motion? Okay, those in favor? Any opposed? No, that's everybody that is carried unanimously. Councillor Crawford, items, do you want to deal with 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 together or, well, actually, no, they are subtly different. Go ahead. Um, so basically, 9, 10, and 11 are uh, to deal with uh, calling to action of the provincial government on the homeless uh, crisis and declaring it a state of emergency or a de declaration of emergency from out of Niagara. And I know Hamilton is looking about doing the same thing. And um, I know, um, I believe Joanne and I are bringing a motion forward to the region, um, stating AMO's position uh, also on the, um, their motion forward at the region on the homelessness situation. I mean, I think that it, we need to endorse all three of these. Uh, this is not a one level um, a government is going to be able to solve this and we need all levels of government to be on side uh, to be able to uh, to address um, the, the issue and I think oh sorry sorry thank you Sterling it's Rhonda and I uh, I apologize it is Rhonda um, and you yeah 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 at the region so um, I think that it's important that we endorse this I'm, I think it's important that Ajax takes a stand on it I think it's important that the region takes a stand on it um, and we we need to have all levels of government supporting us in this uh, in this crisis, really. So um, I'd like to endorse um, all of these these first three, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. Um, before we go there, can we get a seconder? Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you. <laughs> second by Councillor Lee. It's now on the floor. Get a motion to endorse. You have spoken to it. Anybody else wish to speak to the endorsement motion? Nope. Those in favor? I don't know. Okay. Thanks. That's carried. Uh, next item 12. Is uh, the North Perth um, talking about the arms and cameras on the school buses. Um, it's interesting. I, I know that this is not necessary. It's, it's just, just one sec. That's oh, any seconder. You want to endorse this? I do. Can we get a seconder, please? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor um, Henry, would you like to speak to it, Councillor Crawford? 
Well, <laughs> I guess, yes, I've been kind of, kind of trying. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> By the time I get to the next one, I'll get it all right. Um, no, I just think it's it's interesting. Like this is, I know this this deals with the well, school boards and everything else, but I think it's important that we endorse this. Uh, safety on the roads, obviously, as we heard from one of the presenters tonight, is so important. Um, and we've heard even from in Road Watch when uh, the, the officers are talking about um, that some of the bus drivers don't even put on put the stop signs out and that how they're actually really they're they're cracking down on that because they need to be able to stop that traffic. And even sometimes when they have it out, cars don't pay attention to it. So I think this is a really important uh, motion and I would like to endorse it. Thank you. I believe this requires an amendment to the Highway Traffic Act, if I'm correct. But regardless, it's requesting the province to make the changes to, to do require it. this. Yeah. 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 So move by yourself, second by Councillor Henry. Any comments? Those in favor of endorsement? That's carried. And item number 13, please. Um, I would like to endorse this. I need okay. a seconder. Can we, can we get a seconder, please? Second by Councillor Tyler Morin, endorsing the City of Cambridge Barriers for Women's in Politics. Would you like to speak to it, Councillor Crawford? Yes, I think it speaks for itself. I think that um, I think it's just something that I would like to endorse, and and uh, I agree a hundred percent with this. I think this ties in nicely with our first yeah. delegation as well, so it's sort of but not similar. Anything further, Councillor Tyler Morin? No. Nope. Those in favor of endorsement? That is carried. That concludes correspondence. Moving on to reports. And now I have to find my place. Give me one minute, please. I'm kind of all over the place here on this. Uh, departmental reports, strategic plan is done. No community affairs and planning, general government committee. Okay, give me one second to find GGC. Sorry, folks. There we go. General government committee, moved by Councillor Lee, second by Councillor Tyler Morin, that the general government committee report dated March 20th be adopted. Questions or comments on GTC. Nope. Those in support, please raise your hands. Any opposed? That is carried. Thank you. Moving on to no some no advisory committees. Moving on to advisor to departmental reports. We've already dealt with the strap plan, uh, seven point four point two. Moved by Council Lee, second by Council Crawford, that Council approves option one, rescope and renew as outlined in this report. Questions? I know there'll be some on here probably. Councillor Henry. Sorry, are we talking about um, uh, 7.4.2? Yes, the CAO 2023-06 Ajax and Black Racism Task Force update. Okay, I have a lot of questions on this one. Okay. Is um, Ms. Sharma on tonight through the chair? I'm pretty sure she is. Ms. Sharma? Through the chair, yes, I am, Councillor Henry. Okay, so my first question would be, and I've written some notes, so you're going to see my eyes move back and forth here. Um, with regards to the task force and the members on it um, that would be impacted the most by any change, what was the opinion of this task force and doing any change to it at just, all. Just to clarify, Councillor Henry, there are yeah. no members on the task force. The task force was created for the term of council. At the end of the term of council, the task force was disbanded. So there You're are right. Let me let me re members on let, the task let, force. Let me, uh, you are correct. Let me reword right. that. I do apologize. The previous task force ending in 2020. Okay, okay. Ms. Sharma. Sorry, Sorry Mrs. Henry. Sharma. <laughs> You're the chair. Um, Councillor Henry, can you please re repeat your question? Of course. Um, what was the feeling from the previous um, anti-Black racism task force ending in 2022 with regards to making any changes to the task force whatsoever? 
was there an overwhelming support one way or another? Thank you. Through the chair, um, to answer your question, Councillor Henry, um, as detailed in the report, there there were some mixed um, some mixed feedback. Some members were open to um, being having a broader scope to the task force. Some members um, didn't have any desire to continue the task force, um, and just because I think priorities have shifted. Um, and then also some members, um, you know, as as discussed in the report, there there were some reservations about um, just the way that things would move forward with leadership or the different social justice uprisings that may come at hand um, and so forth. Okay, I would like you to speak to a comment, if I may ask, that's within your report. That says, well, others communicated that racial issues faced by the Black community are different. Was this a more general feeling of the committee as a whole? To answer your question, um, Councillor Henry, yes, I think that it is um, very, it is clear that each community experiences um, racism in various ways, including the Black community. Okay, and then with regards to the options that are before us, I'm seeing three options before us. I'm not seeing a big difference between options one and two. With regards to my understanding, two could easily be switched over into the option of one. And can you speak to that, the differences between option one and two? So the options between, um, sorry, the differences between option one and two is um, mainly is mainly about the uh, the name of the task force. Um, that is the main difference. Is option one um, is about re you know, re renaming, rescoping exactly how it's um, outlined. And option two is about um, potentially uh, keeping the name as the Ajax Anti-Black Racism Task Force while, while reviewing the terms of reference and the mandate of the task force. And can I ask why an option four has not been presented that would be to keep the task force as is and create an anti-racism task force separately? So there are a few um, reasons why. So these three options were put forth um, for council to consider um, and, and direct st staff, but also we can consider a multitude of things such as there could be possible need for more staffing. Um, there could be um, just because the social justice uprisings are, um, continuously and rapidly changing in the in the EDI uh, realm. Um, I believe that mirroring a mandate um, such as the region, the framework already exists there. Um, yes. Okay. And are other municipalities within Durham region, are they disbanding or changing the scope or changing the name? of their anti-Black racism task force? Right now, it is um, unclear uh, as to where all the various municipalities have landed on that as they're still either reviewing or um, thinking about or um, in the same um, in the same phase as we are here with Ajax, whether they're reviewing reports from staff or trying to figure out where to move forward or how to move forward um, in the new term. Okay, and is it my my understanding is that our our town, the town of Ajax, high, has the highest population of persons from that community, correct? 
As of right now, yes, town of Ajax, um, as of 2021, from the uh, federal census data, um, there is uh, a 65% of town of Ajax's community is racialized, um, and high percentages would be with the Black community, the South Asian community, and the Asian community. And the Black community, as far as throughout Durham region, has the highest population within the town, correct? The town of Ajax, correct? As of right now, correct. Okay. The scope of this um, task force, um, was it met? Did it meet its objectives successfully? I think that in my opinion, the task force has met its objectives. There has been, um, there is always room and work to continue um, work in EDI. It's continuously evolving, it's continuously changing. Um, and I think that to answer your question, I believe that the scope has been completed. I do believe that there are recommendations um, that we could still work towards. And that's, again, that's just something that we would um, consider uh, in the future. Okay, and when I asked about other municipalities, and I'm not trying to blindsight you on this at all, it's my understanding that Pickering tonight is actually having new members come on board their anti-Black racism task force and, and uh, move forward with the same name of their committee. So in my opinion, I don't know through the mayor at this time whether I'd ask this to go back to staff for a fourth option or put an amendment on the floor with a fourth option that would be to keep the committee as is, as was in 2022 with an additional anti-racism task force separ separated from this task force. Mr. Mayor, just, I, I'd ask your direction on this, please. Just clarification. I have read the report on Pickering Councils, and that's that's not what it's doing. What it's doing is it's before council for, for a decision, but they're not yeah. actually putting members on tonight. It's basically what it says is, um, as the city prepares to welcome new members to the new term, the challenges encountered during the existing, ter existing term must be seriously evaluated, um, which is what it says. So they are going to, I think, do a review themselves, but they're not making those decisions from my understanding tonight. As far as the I, others- I you're, apologize. You're... I, I had reached out to the mayor of Pickering to ask, and that's what I was told. I do apologize if my information okay, is fine. incorrect. That's fine. I, I did pull the report and read it. So that's what the report, the recommendations or what the report says. To your questions, the- uh, you're correct. You can either move an amendment to add an, another, or you can refer this to staff. Would it be amendment. okay? Would it be okay, Mr. Mayor, if I waited until all the questions were asked from my colleagues before making that amendment, or asking it to That's go fine. back to staff? We've, Would that be we've okay? Revised our, we've revised our procedural bylaws, so you've spoken to it. You are able to still make a motion after you've spoken to it, so that is fine. Thank you. I'll wait. Okay. Councillor Lee, you are next. Uh, thank you, Chair. I will start to for it with a question for Ms. Sharma. Ev. Um, why is it important to take a different approach uh, with anti-racism, the concept in general? Through the chair to Councillor Lee, um, it is important to um, take a different approach because as I had mentioned earlier, the Ajax community is rapidly growing and diverse. Again, with 65% of our population being a racialized majority, I need to emphasize majority. Um, it's also crucial to just acknowledge overall that because of this diverse growing population in relation to improving our overall cultural competency. And, and when I say that um, cultural, competency, it's about the understanding of cultural differences, like the histories, how they intersect at a micro and macro level in general. Um, and I do believe that the mandate is there. So following something similar to the region, it's going to encourage collaboration. It's going to address anti-racism for all communities while still respecting each community's various independent histories and their lived experiences um, with anti-racism and racism in general. 
So, um, Chair, if I may just speak on it a bit. Um, there's a very specific reason why I'm supporting this, why I, I almost insisted that I be the mover of this, because ultimately a lot of this started through, you know, a, a very notorious council meeting uh, many years ago, where I was the one pushing for an anti-Black uh, racism task force. And the the idea behind it was that in the zeitgeist, in the, in the society at the moment, at that moment, BLM was the next um, step of the human rights movement. And it, 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 it didn't make sense for us to, to start at a place of anti-racism when the, the catalyst was BLM. So that was why I ultimately pushed for um, an anti-Black racism task force. Here we are now in 2023, and are things better for the Black community as a whole? Absolutely not. You know, we are still fighting the same battles we fought in the 60s and onward. But since then, since 2020, when we first had that meeting and made that decision, we've seen 40% uptick in anti-Asian anti racism. We've seen continued instances of anti-Semitism. We've seen the rise of Islamophobia and Islamophobic attacks. And I just spoke to the inspector of West Division, couldn't give me statistics, but absolutely, we, you know, in this holy month of Ramadan, we're seeing more and more um, graffiti and vandalism at our mosques. So taking that as a whole, I think it's absolutely prudent that we, alt we, we, we update our scope. And again, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a racialized member of council and I'm very proud to be, but I always say to anybody I speak to, there's no such thing as the oppression Olympics. There's no such thing as, oh, I'm more oppressed and focus on me. It, that's, that's not what this is. What we're saying right now by creating an anti-racism task force is right now, there's, we're all feeling the brunt of it right now. And unfortunately, we're seeing upticks across the board. The world is angrier, the world is scarier. And we need everybody at the table to discuss, have honest discussions about what we can do about it um, as a task force, as a town, as a region, as a province, as a country. Because the status quo right now is not working. And I want to hear from other voices at the table. I haven't even begun to uh, touch on the fact that um, the indigenous population very rarely gets mentioned anymore in these kind of conversations. And it's a really scary fact is there's as many as what, over 4,000 missing indigenous women in our country that we're not talking about. And if the scope is strictly anti-Black racism, we would never get there. I'm completely comfortable mimicking the region's um, platform, so to speak. I, I sit on the anti-racism task force, I'm very proud to, but the, 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 the scope is let's create an anti-racism task force and have one of our immediate pillars continue to be anti-Black racism. But then we're also able to touch on all these other things that are affecting, again, not just the region, but the town and specifically our ward, uh, Councillor Henry, and, and all the people within it. So um, that's why I, I, I wholeheartedly endorse staff's position and I hope Council will as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council Tyler Moore. I see your hand. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so my question is through you to Ms. Sharma. Um, so would you would you say that if we were to go with option A, will the black community receive less support? Will they receive less focus, less empathy than, than what we've seen over the last two years with the past task force? That's an important distinction. Um, you know, that I, I just like to just like to get you speaking about, I know there's a lot in the report and thanks for that report. I'm sure it wasn't easy to, to come up with. Do you have any comments on that, please? Through the chair to Councillor Rob Tyler Morin, um, I, I think that's a great question. And I think similarly to the anti-racism task force at the region, option A allows staff to focus on all issues and support all communities effectively. But as um, mentioned um, by Councillor Lee, it allows us to outline a potential work plan and focus on the changing, um, the changing circumstances. So that this doesn't mean that we will not, we will still very much emphasize um, anti-Black racism while also, while while things rapidly move as it's been shown um, in the past two years, we can work toward that together. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, any other uh, comments before I allow Councilor Henry in for the second time? MC's there. Uh, I'll just I'll just do mine and then. Oh, sorry, Councilor Crawford, go ahead. Sorry. 
I, I just really, really quickly just want to say that I appreciate the comments that uh, Regional Councillor Lee uh, made. Uh, it was important. Uh, it was important for me to hear that. And also the fact that he sat on the anti-racism task force at the region still does. Um, and the perspective uh, from being able to sit on that particular task force, um, I think uh, was it's an important distinction for me. And I, I appreciate those comments and, um, and I, I agree with them wholeheartedly. Thank you. And I'll, I'll just do mine quickly before I allow you back in Councillor Henry. Um, I, I also agree. I've sat on this anti-black racism task force with uh, Natasha for the last um, two and a half, almost three years, I guess it was since 2020. And they did some great work and um, had some great ideas. But as, as Councillor Lee correctly pointed out, things have changed. And I think when we started it back in June of 2020, the intent was always to have it. And that time it wasn't originally the anti-black racism task but sorry originally it was anti-racism task force and then we brought it back as the anti ajax anti-black congress and the first thing the committee did was change the name first day um and it always in was intended to have a very strong pillar as council lee said of anti-black racism and I expect under whatever format it comes back as, it will. That will be probably the most predominant pillar of this all the way through. But at the same time, after sitting on this for a couple of years, there was two sides to that committee. There was some that felt very strongly it had to be anti-Black racism only, and some that felt very strongly that maybe that was too confining. It should be opened up and looking at other. And that was a little bit divisive on the committee from, from my observation. So, I'm not a DNI coordinator. I have no qualifications to be second guessing staff on this. That is for sure. Um, so I am going to support the staff recommendation. Uh, Councillor Henry, you'd like to come back in? I would, I would. And I appreciate everything my colleagues have said. I've reached out to different leaders in the community to get their input on this. Uh, I thought about this before going forth with it. it Ms. Sharma's report is is very detailed. Um, I respect her work greatly. One of my my favorite people I bonded with immediately on staff, but I'm still going to bring forth a motion. And even okay, if it's turned down, motion? I'm still going to bring it forward um, that we continue with the anti-black uh, racism task force as it was, with the addition of an anti-race racism. Um, task force as well so so you're two bringing an option instead four? of i'm bringing an option four two instead okay. of one okay so the motion is to um delete option one delete the recommendation yes and two to create an option four which is oh look at that okay the council approved the recreation of the anti-black racism task force as it was with the addition of an anti-racism. So a second task force for this council term. Do we have a yes. seconder? Asking a second time. Okay, motion is lost for lack of a seconder. That's okay. I had to try. Thank you. Further, further, Councilor Henry. No. Okay. On the main motion, uh, I think we've all spoken to it. Do we have any other further comments? Hearing, seeing none, um, those in favor? Any opposed? One opposed, that is carried, thank you. Moving on to our next item. Contract award for 3D Ajax letter sign. We have moved by Councillor Tyler Morin, second by Councillor Henry. Apologies, folks. There's a lot of stuff going on here with my computer. Let me pull this up. There it goes. That council award the contract to the 3D Ajax letters signature signed to Fast Signs of Durham Ajax Whitby in the estimated amount of $232,721.43, inclusive of all taxes, and two, the council approved funding of $80,530,000. 
dollars and sixteen cents to be allocated to capital account number one zero three nine eight one one from capital contingency reserve. Questions, comments, Councillor Lee. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I it's one of these rare instances uh, where waiting on a project actually reduced the price. So yep. uh, you know, congratulations <laughs> on Council for you know not. You know, uh, accepting a two hundred <laughs> at the time, I believe it was, was just two hundred thousand, and you know, eighty thousand is still a lot of money, but I think it will attract tourism, and it, it's just a, a much more digestible number in terms of um, the end result. So, uh, very happy to uh, support this. Thank you, Jared. Thank you. Further, Councillor Henry. I just want to know where it's going to go. I'm excited for it. I just want to know where we're putting it. Okay. Is there a Mr. location? Vito? Yeah, through the chair to Councillor Henry, the sign is planned to go at Pat Bailey Square. Okay, thank you. Any further comments? I'll just say uh, thank you, Mr. Vita, probably Mr. Gruber and whoever else was involved in this, probably Cassandra Cruciano as far as the grant portion. Um, some residents may look at this and say, okay, wow, that amount of money for a sign, but I look at this as good leveraging of our tax dollars. We've got a $150,000 grant for this. So we're getting a $232,000 asset here in the town of Ajax. This is gonna go a long way in tourism and promotion. Uh, just look at the Toronto sign in Toronto and, and what, what that brings to town for a very small copay amount of 80,000. To me, that's good leveraging of tax dollars, spending 80,000 and getting a $232,000 asset. So I will happily support this, Mr. Vita. Thank you for bringing this forward. Anything further on this? Nope. Those in favor? I see all hands. That is carried unanimously. Moving on to the next item. Uh, Council Ward Constituency Newsletter Update. Moved by Councilor Lee, second by Councilor Moore, Councilor Tyler Moore, and the Council approved Ward Constituent Newsletter A delivery option. Questions? Council Lee. I uh, just wanted to amend that actually uh, to option C uh, with a seconder, please. Okay. Do we have a seconder? Second by Councillor Crawford. Uh, the motion to amend. Uh, so instead of option, let me bring this up. So basically just changing the newsletter A delivery option to newsletter C delivery option. Do you wish yes, to speak please. to it? No, no, thank you. I, I, I've labored over this long enough for everyone. Okay, Councilor Crawford, do you wish to speak to it as a seconder? Me either. I've made my points very clear. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm not going to support it. I, I talked at length to this at GGC and I made my comments there. I just feel that it's not the way we should be going. We should be sticking to the electronic, but I won't I won't belabor it. I think it's probably going to pass. Those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. <laughs> Moving on to the next. Uh, so as amended, uh, Chair. As amended. Thank oh, sorry. On the amendment and then those in favor of the motion as amended. Raise your hands. There we go. That's carried. Thank you for catching that, Councilor Lee. Thank you, Chair. Uh, are there any regional council reports? Councilor Crawford. Uh, mine will be short this month. Um, basically, the uh, it's we're still in budget discussions. Um, at works and at transit. So that's basically going through the, the budgets of each of the departments. Um, I was really impressed. Enbridge reached out to me um, about a month ago uh, because we had a gas leak in Ward 1 and uh, reached out to me and asked if they could get together and talk about, um, you know, communication, where things went wrong, um, how, can, how can we do things better, worked out, you know, so um, Devin, our, our comms and, and Cassandra and Rob and our fire ch deputy chief and the fire chief was there. Um, and it was a really good discussion. And I really, really want to commend them for reaching out. Um, it was, uh, you know, it was scary for people that lived in the area. It was a very strong smell. It was better uh, for us to understand exactly what the, what the problems were. And they really were very interested in talking about how do we communicate better. Um, and so we came up with some good solutions, good ideas. And I just really want to give them a shout out today for, for reaching out and, and talking with us because uh, they took it very seriously. 
um, we took it very seriously and our residents took it very seriously too. So um, really just wanted to, to make a comment that, that I was really happy that they did that. Um, we didn't have a community safety well-being meeting this month. Our Vision Zero meeting was very, very short, hardly anything to talk about. Um, I did, um, I don't know if I, if it's appropriate to talk about AMO right now, or do I have to wait till you do that motion? Um, I just realized I may have messed up the agenda. I'm just looking behind the scenes okay. when you're talking. Okay, no, just okay. Keep, go ahead. Okay, it's fine. no worries. I'll just keep going. Uh, no, I, go I ahead. just want to... I want to shout out Cloca. Um, the conservation authorities had their purple woods maple syrup uh, over the last few weeks. I went there. I got, I went on a horse ride. I got my pancakes, and it was a lot of fun. It was uh, one of the first events that they've been able to have since COVID. It was very successful. They they had a number of thousands of people that went through there, and so I'm really happy that uh, that that was uh, a great success. So basically, that's it. That's all I have. Thank you. And and no, I didn't mess up the agenda, but uh, you're fine to speak about the AMO portion if you want to. Oh, okay. Um, so I got on AMO. <laughs> I'm a director on AMO. Yay. Um, and the we were able to actually bring forward, we, we talked about this at Works a little bit uh, in the budget about the ASC cameras and some of the limitations that and the and the signage and the moving around of signs and how much work it is and all that stuff. And so every single municipality that is involved in AMO has ASC cameras and they all agreed with us. And so we had a really good discussion around, um, about, around A, the, the it is cost, it is not, it costs prohibitive. Cost prohibitive. Yeah, to, to smaller municipalities that really want to put it in because it's so expensive to do it. Uh, but then it's all this this labor that has to be done with the signage and, you know, has to be up for three months or six months or whatever the, the time frame is. So we had a really good discussion around that. And I was able to get on to the task force for policing. So every time a regulation drops for policing, then this task force is enacted and we get to talk about what those regulations are. So um, I'm very excited. I, I expect to be quite busy over the next, next little while. Um, the homelessness symposium is coming up with amo in may so we'll, i'll be going to that too so yeah so it's going to be busy but it's good it's all good stuff thank you and i'll just point out councillor crawford you are the first councillor ajax has had on amo in 25 years so congratulations it's better yes <laughs> who, who was the last one who was it previously uh mayor mason i believe back in the quite some time ago Mr. Mayor, for our friends listening at home, can you please uh, divulge the or the short form AMO? Association of Municipalities of Ontario. Thank you. I think it's the first time Durham Regions had two, actually. Yeah, you and yeah. you and uh, Council McCarthy from which. And yeah, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Lee. You are next. Yeah, so, um, you know, in a monkey paw situation, I begged off planning uh, to Mayor Collier. So he said, fine, you can have finance. Um, so 772 pages later, uh, we finished the budget. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a monkey paw situation. I, I shouldn't have made that wish. But one of the key things that um, was the, the it, was, it was like a 0.2 increase. And that was because of the extra um, frontline officers from police. So some of the questions I asked, um, I guess, exiting Chief Rollauer, was just, you know, how much time is being spent on um, mental health cases? Can we have a emergency crisis response team? And he said, it's about 30% of our time. And he, uh, the police force would love it if the region had something like that. So I think there's something on the back end. Um, if not, then you'll definitely see a motion from, you know, Team Ajax regarding that, because I think it is a really important step to have non-armed um, support uh, when dealing with spe specific mental health cases. Um, I also pointed out that realistically, I think they have over 40 to 60 people on long-term leave or, you know, medical leave. And I would rather invest, you know, money in bringing those people back than in investing in 20 new officers over and over. Um, ultimately, uh, what, what tipped the scales in terms of my support of the, you know, 20 frontline officers is, you know, Durham Region right now sits at I think uh, Mayor Collier can correct me. I think it's second last in like size municipalities in terms of the size of our police force. So, I mean, like from a practical stance of point of view, that is also not, you know, acceptable. So I understand, you know, getting 20 new officers, but it's something I'll keep pushing is can we find um, alternative policing? And I'm glad, you know, uh, Regional Council Crawford's on this uh, task force because I think we, we need to start trying 
different things when it comes to policing. We can't keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. More boots on the ground doesn't necessarily lead to more or less crime. So let's try different things and let's be this 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 test bubble um, as a region. So I'll get off my soapbox now and just say that finance is great, but we're going to finish uh, the budget on Wednesday as a regional council as a whole. Thank you, Jared. You're welcome. And you took half my material. I should have done mine before you. Um, and, and you're welcome to finance. I did that for 12 years. So I know the size of those $1.6 billion budgets and how many pages they are. <laughs> um, to the, uh, the planning, we had the, the draft regional official plan come forward to planning for review. We had a, um, a couple of delegations in favor and a lot against. Um, it was ultimately just, it was just there for information that will be coming to regional council, I believe in, is it June? I believe that that will be coming to our June session. I'm pretty sure, uh, the draft regional official plan, but it is out for, um, uh, comments now to the public. As far as police service board, um, we had a very exciting day on Friday. We had our change of command ceremony where we said goodbye to Chief Todd Rollauer after 32, I believe, years of service. Chief Rollauer served in every single um, rank throughout the, the police force throughout his time from constable to chief. He's retiring uh, at the end of this month, and we welcomed in and did the um, the swearing in and the presenting of the sword ceremony to our new chief, Peter Marrera. He's a staff superintendent, comes for, to us, <coughs> excuse me, comes to us from Toronto, very highly regarded, and um, he's, he's fitting right in. So on Wednesday this week, I'll be doing the, um, the quarterly presentation with the new chief and saying goodbye to the old chief at regional council as our quarterly um, presentation for DRPS. Last week, I also, sat on a committee for non-police-led response team, because as Councillor Lee pointed out, 30% of calls the police get have nothing to do with policing. However, it's that's who, who has to respond and deal with the situation. So we already have, similar to our PCOT team, which is two teams at the region where there's a um, social worker and an EMS technician that go out into the homeless community and bring services and, and assistance to the vulnerable populations, we have five where we have a police officer and a, um, uh, a healthcare worker go out into the community um, and, and deal with mental health, oh, sorry, a social worker and deal with mental health. What the non-police led is trying to do is create three teams of um, healthcare worker and social worker which seems like a good idea. Policing, the police are not, are a little concerned about it because if something happens, I mean, they wanna make sure there's an officer there, but we are working on those. <clears throat> we also had a presentation from Ontario Shores about uh, a new program they want to do. And I do understand that there was funding in this most recent provincial budget for mental health. I don't know if that is enough funding to fund this Ontario Shores program, but that will also help alleviate the burden on, on our police forces with regards to dealing with mental health. That will be able to send the people directly to the to the professionals and the specialists at Ontario Shores. But um, again, I'm not sure whether the money, there was money for mental health in the budget. I just don't know if that's enough to fund or if that's to fund that specific program. And that concludes my report. Any questions? Well, first of all, we have moved by Councillor Crawford, second by Councillor Lee, that the Regional Council reports on March 27th be received for information. Any questions or comments on the Regional Council reports? No, nope, hearing seeing none. We were very thorough. Those in favor? That is carried. Moving on to business arising from notice of motion, I will turn the floor over to Regional Councillor Crawford. Okay. So, Councillor or Mayor Collier. Oh, sorry, Councillor Lee. <laughs> so, my gosh, you're on mute. Thank you, Chair. Um, so, yes, I appreciate the delegates' comments, um, but I also just want to 
Um, I'll just read the therefores then, oh man, excuse me. Therefore, staff be directed to bring forward a bylaw uh, to amend the town's temporary sign bylaw and election sign bylaw no later than May 2023, prohibit the use of mobile advertising devices that include the use of amplified voice or music or digital or animated lights, posters, images, and remove an, any option for an individual to pay a recovery fee to the town for the return of an impounded sign. Uh, two, the staff investigate options for an election sign deposit program that require election candidates to pay the town a deposit that can be drawn upon by the town for the removal of all legally placed election signs in the town, provide a report on the same to GGC by the end of 2023. So this actually started with real estate signs. Um, we we enacted this sign by law. I, I get people automatically associated with elections, but it actually has to deal more with um, you know um, the third party lawn maintenance guys, your fence guys, your roof guys, as well as real estate agents. And we had started seeing in uh, Ward 2, the, the arms race of uh, open house signs start up again. So I approached the clerk, the clerk mentioned that the mayor had um, very similar concerns. So um, this is just asking um, for a, a, um, a bylaw amendment to come to us. So this is not actually the decision today. We are just asking staff to show it what it shows what it looked like. We can decide at that point whether to enact it or not. Um, yep. I did hear the phrase voter suppression used a few times. That's not something I take very lightly. Like voter suppression in the United States is, is a very serious issue that prohibits people's ability to vote. I don't think the town of Ajax did that. I don't think we were even close to doing that. Um, a really good example is I think Oshawa had a much lower voter turnout than us. And if anybody drove in Oshawa between May and October, you would have seen it was a it was a dystopia of election signs that was just absolute madness. And that didn't seem to uh, affect anything in terms of voter turnout. So there's no correlation between more signs, in other words. In fact, there's other municipalities, I think Brampton, which was mentioned, yeah. where they, they're even stricter, where you can only put it like on your on your window. And we're not doing that. And I don't hope to do that. But election signs are a blight on the community. There are site hazards. There can't be recycled. There's a litany of reasons why. And it's not just election signs, but also other signs. So that's, that is where the intent of the motion came from. Uh, we, it, was, it, it did go down into the mobile advertising devices because I just want you to picture an election with 25 uh, video AV vans going up and down streets and whether you guys think your residents would find that acceptable. I, for one, do not think it would be acceptable as residents. So I'm looking forward to hearing back from staff and their recommendations for the updated bylaw. And I would love council support on this. Thank you, Chair. Mayor Collier. Thank you, Chair. As seconder, I, I agree with everything Council Lee just said. Not something I say often, but I do. And <laughs> <laughs> Um, the reason why we have bylaws and the reason why we have policies and procedures is, is out of necessity. And the reason why uh, mobile advertising devices were not listed before is because we've just never encountered it before. But now we have, and the number of complaints we received from it, um, it, we have to do something about it. I mean, it's not just the big flashing signs, it's the sound, it's everything else. So, um, no disrespect to the delegate or to any other candidates, but, uh, you know, we do allow signs on lawns. And if you drove around the areas, you knew who was knocking on doors and who wasn't because they had signs on people's front lawn. That is the truest indication of support. You've gone, you've knocked on the door, you've earned their support. The residents that allowed you to put your sign so they are publicly saying they're voting for you on their lawn. Just plastering, as Councillor Lee said, all over the place like Oshawa had makes no difference. And, and Councillor Henry, a little bit tongue in cheek when I made a comment to you earlier about you are case in point that it's not all about signs. It's not. It is, the, and you're just one example of probably hundreds across the province. It's about getting out and talking to people. And Councillor Crawford, during questions earlier, you're exactly right. You can't register a nomination day and put a bunch of signs on medians and then at the end disappear and come back in four years and do it again. That's not how it works. It's about getting through the doors, doing the work. It's not about signs. Now, that being said, many of the candidates still did put out signs, regardless of our bylaw. And that has a significant cost to our taxpayers. And that's a significant amount of work to our bylaw department. And again, no disrespect to the delegate, but to say I didn't know is nonsense. Everybody knew. 
everybody was given the package when they register. Everybody was told the rules. Everybody was given a copy of the signed bylaw. And I'm new and I didn't know, doesn't, you want to run for this position? It's incumbent on you to learn the rules. Not just to say, I didn't know. And after 40, 50 of their signs are picked up and they were told that many times, you still can't say you didn't know because you knew. So it's a cost to the taxpayer. And I don't think that cost should be borne by the taxpayer. We have rules, no problem. And if you if you speed and you get a ticket, you pay it. This is like a similar thing. But instead of trying to chase people afterwards, a deposit system, as is used in other municipalities, not all, but some, would be a way to fix this. No problem. You want to you wanna go around our bylaw and do your own thing? No problem. But every sign we collect, we're going to deduct it off your tab. And at the end of the day, maybe you get your money back, maybe you don't. But at least the costs to our municipality are not, no longer borne by the taxpayers. They'll be borne by the candidates that are breaking the rule. And if the candidates don't like the rules, well, if they are able to get in this position through hard work, then they can change them. But for right now, those are those are the rules as signed by us. So it's, as Council Lee said, this is not making a decision tonight other than just to ask staff to prepare a report and come back to us with some recommendations. I'll, I'll ask for your support. Thank you. Councilor Moran. Uh, thank you, um, Madam Chair. Um, so I, I just want to say uh, I appreciate all the comments that Marilyn made earlier, sorry, Regional Councilor Crawford made earlier, and uh, Sterling, Regional Councilor Lee and Mayor Collier. But I think it's, you know, anybody listening at home, it's very important that you comply. Compliance is very important. I don't think that's my opinion, especially if you're going to run for public office. I mean, you know, it's it's very important. I'm, I'm just kind of repeating what everybody says, but whether or not you're, you know, the incumbent or you're not the incumbent, compliance is, is important. We all make mistakes. That can happen. Um, I do have a question. Um, I don't know if, if we'll do this when it comes back from staff, but I'm just wondering if your sign happens to get moved. So if he or she puts a sign at the right place, it happens to get moved to the wrong place, and then it gets picked up. I, you know, with the, I'm all down with the election sign deposit, et cetera. But if you had 10 signs, will there be a component? Maybe I'll ask this at that time where you'll be able to go and say, okay, I'll, I'll leave it at that, but uh, happy to support. And uh, this is not just for elected officials, for anyone running for office. Yes, Henry. Sorry, oh, Councillor yeah. Crawford, can I make, um... A clarification on something I said because I misspoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Just item one is actually amendments to the sign bylaw. Item two is what's going to be in the report that comes back to council. Okay. With regards to the deposit program. Sorry if I miss. Uh, I misspoke. Sorry if I confused anyone with that. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Henry. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. So um, I can't speak to the delegate because I don't know him that well. I saw the truck and thought, well, that's, that's one way of doing it. Um, I think this is a slippery, slippery slope myself, personally. You can only ban so many things and something new is going to pop up. Like, what are we going to have, hot air balloons next time and skywriters? I don't know. People will find a way. And, you know, I heard very similar to what the delegate said from people I don't even know at the door that I don't even know if they voted for me I know about a hundred people that voted for me the other ones I I don't know who they were and yet I heard they could have voted for my competition yet I heard the same thing at the door how they felt so for me and and take take this scenario I had a hundred signs go missing a hundred that's a lot of signs go missing that bylaw didn't have. And I know this because I checked with Derek Hanna and he went out and looked in the bin. So if he had one or two of my signs and a hundred went missing, where did they go? Did Councillor Henry freeze for the uh -oh. yeah, I think so. she froze. And then what happens to someone like me for every one of them, put them somewhere else. I'm not frozen, can you hear me? Yes, you're back you just kept going. That's all right. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the last thing you heard? Did you hear about the hundred signs? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
So for someone like me who had a hundred signs go missing that bylaw did not have, what if all those signs ended up in places that I never put them as some kind of prank or joke or something gone awry? Then what, I get penalized for that or the next candidate? So I, I can't support this. I'm sorry. I know that I know what I heard at the door and people told me whether they voted for me or not. I still don't know. But I know that they told me that they were not happy with the change in 2018. And nobody complained to me about the delegates, truck, electric, whatever that was. Nobody complained to me at the door about that. I never heard from one person. So I, I think that the more we banned, the more innovative ways people will come up with getting this. And I'm just waiting for the next election, a hot air balloon or something. Something's going to happen. So I'm going to say, I can't support this. I'm sorry. Thank you. I will support it. I didn't see it, but that's likely because I was door knocking. So I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? It passes. Thank you. Back to you, um, Your Worship. Nope, still you for the next one. Okay. Uh, okay. It's, it's you. Go ahead, Mayor Collier. Uh, th I, don't, I don't think I need to talk much on this. I just actually have a question to, um, I guess, Ms. Valentin. Just on the therefore, my intent on this motion was to have uh, not just vehicles. So it says staff be directed to report back to council in June on the feasibility of purchasing vehicles and equipment over 100,000 through the issuance of debentures. Ms. Valentin, my intent on this was to also include capital, uh, like the two point something million dollar expansion to the fire hall to accommodate the new truck and the 20 new firefighters, uh, not just vehicles and equipment. I just want to make sure that you are clear where it says equipment that that, my intent is that that means capital as well. I'm not talking about, are, are you there? I don't see you on the screen. Um, yes, Mr. Mayor, I'm here. <laughs> I, I'm not talking about things like a roof replacement. I mean, that would be maintenance repair. I'm talking about new buildings, expansion to existing buildings like the fire hall that are referred to and our large dollar item um, equipment and vehicles like fire trucks and, and the big snow plows and that type of thing. Just wanted to make that clarification. We're not talking just about vehicles. Is that your understanding? Um, well, Mr. Mayor, so the, the debt policy does currently allow for that but um, we are not choosing to do that at this point, but rolling stock has not been included in our policy, so we can look at that as well. Okay, well, if that's the case, then then never mind. I'm, I'm happy with this. I just wanna make sure that you understand that's sort of the intent to look at that whole bundle. So I'll just speak to it quickly. Thank you, Ms. Valentin. Thank you. Um, we are, have just finished our capital and our operating budgets. We did them both together because of the election last year. And, um, we know the pressures on our capital budget. Last term, we developed an investment policy, which is working well for us, especially with the increase in interest rates. Um, it's, it's really helping because at the same time, our capital budget is being hindered by the reduction of our slots revenues from Ajax Downs and the reduction of our dividends payments from our shares in Alexicon. Uh, neither one is one that we really know how much is going to be there in the several few years. At the same time, the province has made us do a number of studies, such as the asset allocation policy and a number of others. We did our stormwater management plan. We did our fire master plan. We did our recreation and culture master plan. We did a lot of plans last, last term, and we have incredible pressure on our capital. Uh, by looking at this, instead of buying a fire truck cash, for instance, say one and a half million dollars, just to use a number, and taking one and a half million dollar chunk out of our capital, that vehicle has a five year, or sorry, a 15 year um, lifetime. By debenturing it, debenturing is just basically taking a loan through the region of Durham uh, as, our, as our bulk lender, and it goes out and corporate bonds are issued. It's at a very low interest rate. So yes, 
we would have a small um, operating expense each year. But at the same time, our capital, that full one and a half million dollars, for instance, would still remain in our investment strategy, long-term investment strategy, because it's 15 years making, I don't know what it, they're making these days. I think they're making somewhere in the five to 6% range. It's at least, if not a little bit more than the interest we would be paying. We would not be depleting our capital. And again, that truck would have a 15 year term. I just wanna look at it. I want staff to report back with the numbers of a direct comparison between buying it outright and foregoing the investment income for 15 years and basically getting a loan on the vehicle and making the small payment and see at the end of the day where we are and how that works out for us. Because I believe uh, that that will go a long way into preserving our capital. We also have made some pretty strong changes through our 2% um, increase for asset allocation and our almost 2% for stormwater as well to help. But I believe by looking at this, and if we do initiate it, it will go a long way as well into solving some of our issues in our long-term um, capital budgets. So I'll just leave it there. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, Regional Councillor Lee. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is actually something I disagreed with the mayor on initially. Um, and I think I was very much stuck in the traditional way that municipalities paid for things. Then I learned that other municipalities are you know, kind of testing this out as a whole. I'm also very curious to see what the staff report will show. But right now, you know, this is my fifth year on council and we're continuing to see the provincial government download costs to us, whether it's in the form of reports required or pledges or anything else like that, that we have to start finding uh, unique ways to um, allocate our whatever the minute resources we have left. So i um, fully support this. I'm very uh, eager to see the report in June. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Henry. I just want to ask through the chair to staff Ms. Valentine's comment that we currently don't do it this way. Can I ask why? Um, through the chair, um, we have we have a financial sustainability plan, and um, within that, um, we updated the financial sustainability plan back in December of 2020. Um, we hadn't taken out a lot of debt. We, the debt was basically um, utilized by the town for new buildings or any major renovations over 500,000. In December of 2020, when we came back with our updated plan, we revised our debt policy to include um, other capital um, um, investments. Um, we just, at this point, we had funds available and we thought it was more prudent to uh, pay for the things. Uh, we do have a substantial amount of debt that will be coming online with some of our uh, Reckon Culture Master Plan items that have, have come through in a feasibility study. So we're just, uh, we'll, we'll bring forward the report uh, looking at the vehicles um, and we'll also do um, a review of the upcoming debt that the town uh, will likely have to undertake in the coming years. So do you have an opinion on this, whether you would recommend or not recommend this? Um, through the chair, at this point, I think it's just best if we uh, do the crunch the numbers and bring forward a report back to council. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Ooh. Seeing none, um, we have a motion on the floor. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, passes. Over to you, Your Worship. Thank you. Just let me catch up on my screen here. We've done the signs. We've done this one. Uh, we've already done the... When we're going to defer the item 9, 9.4, called the provincial government and homelessness in Ontario because Councillor Dides is not here. So we're going to move that one forward to the next. And I need a motion to suspend the rules of procedure to bring the following motion, sorry, to bring the following motion that the rules of procedure be suspended in order to introduce a motion without notice regarding the appointment of Marilyn Crawford to the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. So I suggest, Councillor Crawford, you may have an interest in this. 
<laughs> can I get a move? Can I get a mover in a seconder, please? No, oh, yeah, my I mean, hand you, was up. You can't move it or second it. I don't think you might have a pecuniary. Interest. Oh, that might be a conflict. <laughs> a conflict. Moved by Councillor Henry, second by Councillor Lee, that the rules be suspended. Again, this requires two thirds. Those in favor? I'll vote. That's four. That carries. And now I need to turn over the chair to Councillor Lee, as because Councillor Crawford hasn't has a, a conflict, and I'm moving the motion. So move by myself, and I believe this is second by Councillor Tyler Morin. Whereas Regional Councilor Marilyn Crawford has been selected for appointment to the Region and Single Tier Caucus of the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, AMO, for the 2022-24 term. And AMO requires endorsement of the selection by the Council of the Town of Ajax. Therefore, be resolved that Council endorse Regional Councilor Marilyn Crawford's appointment to the Region and Single Tier Caucus of the AMO Board of Directors for the 2022-2024 term. And expenses associated with this appointment be funded through the Office of the CAO. And the clerk forward council's resolution expressing support to AMO by March 28th, 2023. I don't even need to speak to it. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, Councilor Tyler Congratulations. Murray. Well done. Um, I actually have a question <laughs> to be fair. I don't know if Marilyn can answer this. What if we vote no on this? Does that mean you don't become the director? How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just curious. I think like, so. just procedurally. I, think so. I, just, I, I, I do think that, it, it has, it's, yeah, I don't think I can be out there without your your approval that's fascinating okay very good uh just okay good i will call to vote then all in favor <laughs> opposed congratulations Regent Councilor crawford thank you that would have been kind of a defining moment <laughs> okay moving back uh we've dealt with these next is bylaws bylaws moved by Councilor tyler moore and second by Councilor henry Oops, sorry, sorry. The bylaws number 08-2023 to 09-2023. We read a first, second, third time and passed. Uh, oops, sorry. Never mind. Let me go back. Any notices of motion? Nope, no notice. Am I frozen? Nope, no notice of motion. Any new business or announcements? Uh, do we do the That's, bylaws, Chair? No, that comes after. That's why I had to come back. I oh, skipped it's, it's two items. Different on, yeah, it's different on the. Um... I was, I was working. I'm working off two different screens here. No, no, no. no. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry. Just, just to clarify, the confirming bylaw. I, I don't mean the confirming, but I mean the bylaws. So, uh, 08 2023 Omers, and then private transportation. I think that's the one you were getting us sorry, to. Sorry, that's what I was doing. Is the bylaws? Yeah, that's what you were, you were there. You were, yeah. So yeah. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Oh, you're right. Yeah, go ahead. So um, the motion that on homelessness uh, that we are, are we deferring that to next council? Is that where that goes? And will it automatically go there? I believe we just dealt with it as um, not proceeding because the mover was not here. So I think okay. it automatically will go to the next, but Mr. Okay. Clerk or- I just don't want it to Clerk, get lost. It will get lost. Can you confirm? Yes, we'll make sure it's on the next agenda. Thank you. Madam Clerk, thank you. Uh, okay. Council Lee, you were, you were right again. Bylaws, I already had it moved in second on the floor. Read a first, second, third time and passed. Those in favor of the bylaws? That includes, yep, that is carried. Now notice of motion. Any notice of motion? Nope, notice of motion. New business and announcements. Council Lee. Thank you, Chair. Um, in, uh, do, because our, our War 3 uh, uh, councillors are unfortunately not here, I just thought I'd say that they have their... Um, Ward 3 community meeting online uh, on Thursday, March 30th at 7 p.m. Um, so hopefully everybody can attend that. And then uh, on a personal note, it is WrestleMania weekend where hopefully uh, the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes will take down uh, the Tribal Chief uh, Roman Reigns. Thank you, Chair. Oh, my God. That's a first. Any other new business or announcements? Um, Ms. McClarty mentioned earlier that live with the mayor first ones in this term first one this new term will be tomorrow night at 7 p.m um, information is available on our town website and it will be across all our channels as well please join me i will be opening up with discussion of our new strategic plan and then answering questions um, throughout the throughout the time councillor henry 
I just want to know because uh, we're going we're going in person with our meetings. I just want to know when live when the, with the mayor will be back in person. Uh, I don't know that quite answer. Like the real live mayor, where you could you know walk up and touch his shoulder, but don't do that. Don't do that, people. But when will that happen? <laughs> I, I actually don't know that we do it this way just because we have a much broader audience and it's just it's just more convenient and easier but Ms. Ms. McClarty are you able to answer I we haven't actually even had that discussion I thought we did it for COVID but now that we're like going back to in person like a real in person it just works so much better sort of in the studio environment with the you know to to broadcast it properly and and it's not it's much more difficult when you're in a um, the last one we did was in a, a manufacturing plant but uh, i see cao baker have you had this discussion uh through you mr chair uh, actually no not yet uh that's something that uh i could be discussing with our staff to find out um but probably for the reasons that you've mentioned it hasn't been a priority yet because yes we we reach a much broader audience right now doing the uh the virtual do we, do we know through through the chair do we know how many people we're reaching through live with the mayor versus how many attended because I, I remember it being well re, well attended it was you had a good turnout through you mr mayor i don't i don't have those numbers with me tonight yeah i don't i don't either we can certainly get those to you councillor henry thank you Anything further on new business announcements? Moving on to confirming bylaw. Moved by Councillor Tyler Moore and second by Councillor Lee. That bylaw number 10 2023 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Ajax at its meeting held on March 27, 2023, be read a first, second, third time and passed. Those in favor? That is carried. And finally, Moved by Councillor Henry, second by Councillor Crawford, that the meet March 27th, 2023 meeting of the Council of the Town of Ajax be adjourned. Those in favor? That's carried unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, staff, job, for all your hard work tonight. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Uh, Thank you. Good night.